Welcome, my friends. Welcome to the outer fringes of reality, where fact meets speculation, where paranoia meets illumination, where madness overlaps the fragile membrane of sanity. Do not be afraid. Open your eyes and open your minds to that region that lies beyond the realm of the known, that region we call the Exozone. I am your host, Dicta Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, and with me is my co-host and aficionado of all things Fringe, the Nerdrotic Channel's Gary Beekler. Gary, hello. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? Oh, I'm I'm hanging in, feeling kind of kind of funky, but hanging in. That's good. Well, I mean, it's good that you're funky, but it's good that you're hanging in. But yeah, uh, I'm sorry that you're feeling funky, and we'll we'll do a nice relaxed uh trip into the unknown and the impossible and the possibly yes. very scary uh, uh yes it's a very weird time right now it's a very weird time and we've got some interesting things to talk about tonight uh and uh, i'm looking forward to doing it uh harvey actually um released uh uh cthulhu's realm of this on uh patreon but i don't think well he he made some some sense and other stuff was just rambling madness but uh, i think we're gonna we're gonna mostly make sense tonight i think i kind of assume since he's an eldritch god that i'm just not understanding it he's wacky it, it might it's sound a... wacky to us but you know he's trillions of years old so <laughs> it made me laugh it was so dumb but uh but but i jumped in and and imposed myself on the conversation save so him a little bit yeah a that's little good. bit that's good um well, welcome everyone welcome viking turtle and chris p and hector and rob slevin and clayton george and john nola and vertical horizons and wayne nelson and roma gray wolf and gary nadu uh sexy name there my friend rr is here and Stuart mitchell james coserta and Lori wilson hi Lori. how's it going Lori? all right Two top, we got two topics tonight that I think will be just fine, and they are not the thing that shall not be named. We will probably do you and I will probably do something recorded again on that. And I want to publicly apologize. I had somebody super chat today, and it's it, totally understandable, by the way. It's I, I get it that you know, Doomcock and I had the talk in code, even if we're recording off platform. And I want to remind everyone that YouTube can probably pull a patreon and if we say something off platform that they don't like they could probably do something to us there but uh as far as that conversation we will do it off this platform maybe we can do it on d live or twitch or something eventually where we can all discuss it and i'm all for it and you know everything's on the table and we can talk about it but today we're going to talk about something else really weird. Um, now, of course, I want to talk about Randall Carlson. I have a little video that we're going to go over later. But first, we're going to cover the Pentagon doing something that I thought they had already done, but apparently they didn't. And I don't know if this is just dotting an I and crossing a T, Doomcock, or if this is something more nefarious, which it I'm going to guess is nefarious. Uh, yeah, well, I look, it's weird. Uh, so basically, my understanding is, and my understanding could be incorrect on this point, but uh, I think I more or less have it that the Pentagon has officially released the same videos that we saw like six months ago that they were broadcasting on that show uh, identified and in other shows at the time. I mean, you know, the whole Tic Tac Nimitz incident, uh, the Pentagon has officially released that footage. And uh, previously it was regarded as a leak of sorts. Although, see, the weird thing is they, they cooperated. They co I mean, they did. They cooperated with those shows. Now, you know, I mean, they didn't come out and officially cooperate and saying like an official spokesman, but they allowed the pilots to uh, to talk on camera. They allowed the cameras to roll on these pilots. Now, one of them pretended to be more or less in shadow, but they didn't disguise her voice. So they're going to figure it out. I mean, nobody was really scared. and uh, and And yet now they've come out and they've admitted it and uh, and officially, officially admitted it, officially released it, which officially means that UFOs are real. Yep. End of story. And it just End goes under the story. radar. We have been waiting for this for our entire lives. 
the UFO community has been waiting for this for their entire existence. Yes. And crickets from the UFO community. Well, crickets. Well, uh, my feeling is that everybody a was already inoculated. As I said at the time, if you'll recall that, uh, releasing it in this kind of boring, let's face it. It was a boring show that beat it to death uh, and, and kept showing the footage over and over again. Uh, so people were inoculated. Then I think possibly the reason for phase two now releasing it is because everybody is already busy with their sheltering in place and their, you know, distancing, et cetera, and so on. Too busy to worry about shit that they already heard six months ago. But there's, but they are missing the implications. They're, they're missing the implications that, you know what? I've said it a million times. We only need one UFO to be real to turn the paradigm on its head. Well, these are real. So what does that tell you? Yep. These are real and they're not ours. So any argument about patenting and that, that, no, what, what this uh, little on the top video, which is you're seeing on the upper left-hand corner, that is the Tic Tac, uh, or not, sorry, it's in the middle right there. Right. And uh, I don't know if that's another one on the, on up in the other left-hand corner. I think corner. it has to be, but it's just yeah. not, it's not got the gun camera locked on it. No. Now, hey. now there was a whole fleet yes. of, of these things uh, flying around. So- these things are impossible the way they fly and stop. If, uh, they, we don't have anything that can go that fast. That's for one, there's no way to propel it. All right. So, uh, unless we figured out any gravity, uh, this isn't a drone with a propeller. Okay. And it's going from the surface of the ocean up to our atmosphere in a matter of a second or two. Or, or maybe under it was like some ridiculous amount of time that no, it's a, insane. Human, there's no was, way. There's just no way. So I'm not I'm not even gonna entertain that that it's ours. It's not because if some country had this, they've won. They own the earth. Yep. They, they have technology to to make us all slaves. So there's no way. There would be um, no defense. There would be uh, nothing that could uh, take care of them. Take them out. You know, uh, you know, you could stick them full of Acme, uh, you know, uh, Wiley e. Coyote style uh, boom booms, and and they could just go where they wanted to go and and boom what they wanted to boom, and that's it. And it's just like, well, uh, that's not happening. So, Plan B. Yeah, I, you know, I, I haven't been around government stuff, so I've never worked for the government or anything, but I was around Tesla. Okay. I was around some pretty sophisticated, you know, car technology. And I know that's nothing compared to like a tank and a freaking plane, but listen, we're nowhere near being able to do that stuff. Wish we were, but we're not. Uh, and if we were, then we'd be, we would be tootling around the solar system. No problem. And I know David Wilcox says we already are. I don't believe him. Nah, I don't, I don't believe it. No, I don't uh, believe it. Look, if it was okay. Let's just let's just be logical here. If this was the government stuff and this footage leaked, the last thing that the government is want to do is is perpetuate it and, and and release it further and call more attention to it because it's like, hey, it's our shit. We don't want people to know about it. Shut up. Ixnay on the UFOA, right? Yep. yep. But no, that's I mean, they're basically saying we're perplexed. Well, if, if, if the Navy had been making an, a stink about this, they would have called, you know, the, the admiral in charge of the whole shebang in and said, hey, cut it out. You shut it up. Let it go. You know, don't worry about it. That's what that's what would have happened. And we would have never heard anything about it. I mean, let sleeping dogs lie. Why did they release it now? That And that's a question for the chat, really, because I my my first reaction was that the Navy doesn't know and they're just like, screw it. We're putting it out there. I don't know if that's, I have to rethink that, but that's all I can come up with right now. What do you guys think in the chat? Cause I am perplexed on this one. Why they well, would do uh, this. I, I think, uh, that the only reason why they would do it is because 
they have no choice. My feeling is that uh, these, uh, whatever these pilots are, are fixing to reveal themselves. They're getting more brazen, whatever the prime directive was, or, you know, prevented them from disclosing, uh, you know, I, I think, I think the rules are about to change and I don't think that the Navy is going to, ch is changing them. I think, I think that the change is coming from right there. Whatever is piloting those things is not going to stay secret much longer because I don't think these governmental entities disclose things that they don't have to. No. You know, knowledge no. is power. They don't share knowledge. No. And I, I think it's partially due to this is a different Navy than it was even 30 years ago. Uh, a Navy that would sacrifice some sailors without question. And I think they treat their people with a little more respect than they used to, uh, or a little less disposable. I'm not saying totally. Uh, they've also, I think what you said is they have a couple of pilots who are just have unquestionable character out there that are yep. talking about this and you can't character assassinate these guys. I guess they could, but I don't, uh, I think the public, uh, you know, there's something to Bob Lazar's story and what Bob Lazar did was go out and get the public and the media to back him a little bit. And that gave him power. And that's why he didn't disappear. I think he's right on that. And I think uh, similar things happening here that they went out there, they got out in front of it and you're right. The, the Navy has no choice. They, they can't character assassinate. They can't disappear people. I mean, this isn't politics. They still do that stuff in politics, in my opinion. But um, I think that might have something to do with it. Uh, there's also something else at play. Whatever we know, we know like the very tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. That's what I'm more curious about is like, what's really going on? You know? Well, uh, I, yeah. I, I mean, just bat. Oh, go on. Well, I, I was just going to let you know uh, that also uh, the Navy a few days ago held a classified briefing for uh, members of, uh, of Congress. Um, so again, this is, this is not just some kind of caprice. This yeah. is, this is a calculated, uh, disclosure that these things are real. And, um, that's just, that's just all there is to it. Now, why that that's really the question is why, what is the urgency? Why are they doing this? What is coming that they need to basically start accelerating easing people into? Okay. Now, you know, I haven't needed to be eased into anything because I've known that these things are real for a long, long time. You know, so, and, and, I mean, the, the evidence is, is overwhelming, is yep. overwhelming. And you can't like, I am not hypnotized. I am not the kind of person that goes with the sheep. You can tell me it's swamp gas. I'll tell you you're full of shit and uh and think for myself and it's just too damn much evidence and if there was ever even one photo that was real that meant that the whole phenomenon is real and this stuff is real it is and then you need to once that sinks in once that starts settling in in your brain then there's other questions that come up so are these scouts are these like, I think we've seen something pretty extraordinary happen to everybody in the world over the last couple of months. And I think it shifts your perspective. Uh, maybe you start becoming more open to other possibilities. Um, and yeah, you know, again, I just crapped on Wilcock cause I think he's full of it. I know some people like it. And if you watch the stream for entertainment, that's fine. He has thousands of people watching his streams and, uh, you know, I've listened to him at, uh, contact in the desert and he's, he's entertaining to listen to. And I don't, you know, I don't hate the guy. Uh, I just think he's gotten into cult guru status and I don't think it does the movement any good, but he has his right to say what he wants to say. And that's fine. Uh, I'm more of a Richard Dolan, Dolan guy. Uh, but I like my woo woo people too. And, uh, I, I, I know he's been talking about, you know, the secret space program and stuff. You know, I certainly think we have a military wing of the space program. I think it's been around forever. I don't doubt that. I just don't think it's that quite advanced. I'm sure it's more advanced than they tell us. I believe that. I just don't think we're spinning around the solar system quite yet. Uh, I just don't think 
I, I just don't think I could be wrong. You never know. But with this one, yeah. So I've always believed that there was UFOs, but now that we have the Navy coming out and saying it, yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, what's next? Uh, are, are, are we being, I mean, is this the beginning of something? Are we, are we, are we going to find more? Are we going to find out that we did have alien bodies at a base? Uh, which I believe we did too. So, well, this is disclosure. Yeah. I mean, this is not full disclosure in terms of the, you know, what's in the, in the whys and the who's, but it is disclosure. Now, hell, it may be full disclosure. Maybe they don't know. I find that very difficult to believe, yeah. but maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't. Uh, but I, I think we've been visited by multiple races from possibly other dimensions or deep space or from the past or from the future. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and, and yes, from the past, by the way, yes, from the past, that is, uh, uh, and that's something we'll talk about later. Um, who knows, but, um, we have seen this footage so much. And, and one of the most surprising things to me is, is, is how boring they did make this and how much this flew under the radar and <laughs> how, how this is Arthur, this is straight up, um, Douglas Adams stuff. I, I now am fully convinced that if the UFOs landed and people just wouldn't notice, they go, huh, there's a UFO over there. That's funny. And it would be a, somebody else's problem field, just like from Hitchhiker's kind of just <laughs> life, the universe and everything. Like there's a giant spaceship on a pitch that nobody notices. Cause it's too stressful to think about. <laughs> I don't like, know, yeah. man. I don't know. I, maybe, maybe people are like that. I'm not, I've oh, never no. been like that. You're one of those outliers from Westworld. You would be. I, I am. That's yes. right. I'm actually uh, Dolores. Uh, you know, deep down, I, I'm I'm Dolores. Always have been, and I'm frustrated that uh, I'm in this male body. I'd really wish I was in Dolores's body. Then I'd be oogling myself in the mirror constantly. Yeah. But, uh, no luck. No luck. No Freaky Friday for for Doomcock. No, sad Dolores. No, that's goddamn the the fun I'd have looking like Dolores. You can't even imagine just never leaving the house. Yeah, just never leaving the house. Evan Rachel Wood. <laughs> well, yeah, she's wooden, but uh, you know she's also rather attractive. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so let's go over this article real quick. Uh, see what the uh, science alert has to say. Pentagon has a finally declassified those grainy UFO videos from the U S Navy. Now, before we go on, there is copies of very clear video out there that has been said multiple times by multiple pilots that we are getting the shit copies. Uh, believe you me, I don't think there, I mean, this looks like and no offense to Mexico or anything, but it looks like the, you know, the Mexican uh, air force stuff we got from 20 years ago. So well, I, I may, I may be wrong, but it's my feeling that these videos are just a hair uh, better than what we had before. Now I could be it completely feels like crazy, it. but it, it, it feels, especially on the, the spindle top one. Uh, yeah. That, that one at, at top, it, it looks, uh, it looks clearer to me. Yeah, that's the crazy. East Coast one, uh, the one on top right there. Yeah, um, I could be wrong. Yeah, you know, the weirdest thing is these little white things. Uh, I've had, I can't tell you how many people in San Diego have seen these things. I never did. That's what pissed me off is like I never did. But uh, people saw UFOs all the time in San Diego. But the thing is down there is there's so many planes and copters and stuff in the air. Uh, there's multiple airports and like here in San Francisco, for whatever reason, they don't fly a lot of helicopters. Maybe it's the wind. I don't know. But in LA and San Diego, there is helicopters flying over your head every five minutes. And I'm not yeah. joking. It's a life flight or some news helicopter or some private helicopter, or, you know, you're right next to, uh, there's a bunch of military bases. There's Camp Pendleton. So there's always huge uh, helicopters going over all the time. So when you see weird stuff in the sky, you're just like, eh. and I, you know, I have seen weird stuff in the sky, but I always thought it, you know, it pretty much could be explained as a plane or maybe a, a drone or whatever. Uh, but I've heard people, you know, one, the, the two things that happen a lot in San Diego are 
the U- seeing UFOs and mystery booms, those mystery booms you're always hearing about that stuff I've heard. Uh, and sometimes it'll be just a sonic boom from the Navy and they'll admit it, but it's the weird ones is when they say, nope, it wasn't an earthquake and it wasn't a sonic boom and everybody in the city heard it. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's just like a boom. Um, so I, yeah, is there something going off, you know, near Catalina and there's always been, uh, rumors, uh, you know, there, there was that one time where somebody thought they found an underground base off of Catalina, which was just like a, uh, it's on Google earth. You can see it. Not so sure about that, but, uh, the United States Pentagon is secretive place by nature, but every once in a while, the public gets a little peek behind closed doors. After years of speculation, defense officials have now declassified and released three grainy videos from the Navy that have been circulating online for a while now, causing all sorts of speculation. The mysterious footage was captured using infrared cameras in November of 2004 and January 2015 and leaked to the public a few years ago. To this day, even with a flurry of internet speculation, no one can say for sure what these videos actually depict. In one, a pilot can be heard saying, what the F is that? As a strange object whizzes over the ocean. Well, when a trained observer and pilot says, what the F is that? Uh, I'm going to guess that it's probably a legitimate unidentified object. In another, a spindle shaped thing of a Bob can be, uh, can be seen <laughs> rotating it's effing, it's an effing drone, bro. The pilot says to his colleague, my gosh, uh, they're all going against the wind. Another comments. Uh, my favorite thing was the critics of this saying pilots don't talk like that. Really? Uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. I mean, they're just people. They're, they're dudes. <laughs> they're not, it's, this is, ain't, this ain't the sixties anymore. And they're not Chuck Yeager. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the Pentagon is concerned, these fast flying mysterious objects are unidentified aerial phenomena, more, uh, more popular, popularly known as UFOs. Of course, as surely we shouldn't have to repeat by now, seeing a UFO doesn't point to the existence of alien vehicles operated by another life form. That's just a technical way of saying we don't know what that was. Yes, but, but of course, that doesn't mean that it's not dumb shits and what other what other explanation do you have that's what i would like to hear yeah because it's not us it's so not, it's not us. us uh is it is it dolphins like is there <laughs> is there a is there an intelligent group of dolphins down there is it mice uh is it monkeys um what what is it then it's just a metal thing that came out of nowhere that you know uh, maybe it's V'ger. I don't know. Last September, after fielding many, many questions from the public, the U.S. Navy admitted these videos were real. Although for some, that still wasn't enough. Uh, yeah, there are some people in ufology who think these are faked uh, because it's part of a blue beam conspiratorial thing. And uh, yeah, I guess what right. could they possibly be distracting us with, with fake UFO footage then? What? Because that is scarier. If they're trying to distract us with something they have been hiding for decades, uh, what's happening? Is is Cthulhu coming? (laughs) I mean... (laughs) Cthulhu is already here. Just let me in. Knocking at the door, man. Is Godzilla coming? Is is Yellowstone going to go off? Is there... Well, that that would be very bad. That would be very bad. But this next part, uh, is is what really gets me. Now, after a thorough review, defense officials have decided to share the original videos after deeming that they held no classified information. Quote, DOD is releasing the videos in order to clear up any misconceptions by the public on whether or not the footage that has been circulating was real or whether or not there was more to the videos. Since when? Since when? Has plausible deniability not been a strategy of the U.S. government? Come yeah. the fuck on. This is a big deal, people. This is a big deal. They wanted to make sure. In other words, they wanted to make sure that everyone understood that these are UFOs, okay? That's what it's saying. They wanted to make sure. Yeah. They wanted to leave no doubt 
that this was actual genuine stuff and not fake. Why? Why? <laughs> What's coming that they're, we need to be prepared, yeah. uh, prepared for? My, my other thought is they're like, wait a minute. We told them the UFOs are real. All of our studies for years have told us the public would panic and they're not panicking. So we're like, okay, let's tell them they're real. Maybe they'll learn. Maybe they'll start panicking this time. Nope. They didn't panic. Hardly <laughs> even anyone noticed. No, no. and yes, what, uh, honestly, uh, that's the question I guess I was looking for is what's really going on? Like, what are they hiding? What, uh, uh, dude, are we getting invaded? <laughs> like, well, uh, now that leads me to another, uh, piece of news that Harvey was discussing, uh, in, uh, in proximity to Jupiter, there are 19, uh, large objects that uh, have uh, been circling Jupiter are moving in uh, weird directions contrary to uh, standard orbital directions. Um, a muamua blew in and uh, changed course and, and, and shot out, accelerated out of the solar system. And then uh, talk of these centaurs. That's what they call them, centaurs. Um, what are these centaurs? Uh, what are are they are they uh, asteroids meteors which is kind of the official story that's kind of going around or uh, are these uh, you know uh, calling occupants of interplanetary craft right yeah. is it motherships what's going on and they're called centaurs Cent centaurs yes the centaurs of Jupiter that was the name of my video that Harvey uh, well my, my podcast that Harvey uh, recorded. Um, so, you know, they're trying to say, uh, some, some of these articles are saying that they were detected in, in 2015, but I don't know if I trust that. It's just a very, very weird coincidence that all of a sudden I'm hearing about these things that are in proximity to Jupiter. Um, after a Muamua had blown through, they, they believe that these things are also interstellar uh, visitors, although they're theorizing they got caught in uh, Jupiter's orbit, uh, you know, gravity field. But if that's the case, why are they maneuvering in such weird ways? I don't know. Uh, I, that, I, that I'm less certain of, but I am certain that uh, these, uh, these unidentified aerial phenomena are genuine and have been for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and I'm watching this other video right now of something struck Jupiter recently. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's a grainy ass photo. Oh, I'm gonna try to see if I can find a better video of it. Now, plus, I don't want to go to CNN, FCNN. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, it's a weird time. It's a weird time. Even this article says, "What a small, strange world we live in." Yes, it's a weird, small, strange world when the journalists have, are covering uh, these UFOs, and instead of uh, asking what the hell are they, and and you know getting speculative, they just say, "Now, just remember, uh, this doesn't mean that they're piloted by alien life forms." It's like, well, then what else? What else yep. is it? They're piloted by something. Something's oh. going on. And it ain't us. 19 objects near Jupiter may be from outside the solar system. Exactly. Uh, a team of astronomer, ast astronomers think it's found a whole new slew of interstellar visitors, asteroids that came from elsewhere but got trapped in the sun's gravitational pull orbiting out near Jupiter. So they're assuming these are asteroids. Well, uh, of course. They said and, Oumuamua was an asteroid and had that lumpy long rock drawing of it but uh, yes yet when we saw the actual footage of it it looked kind of shiny uh it was hard red to... and shiny yeah it's weird uh the, the objects drifted in from interstellar space uh and got caught by jupiter and we yeah currently we that's have what us... they're saying yeah that's but what it says saying. it's still possible uh, that the asteroids uh, have unusual orbits for some other reason. Well, yeah. And what, what was those unusual orbits again? 
that they were well, they're going uh basically uh contrary to uh the orbital path um look look here it says uh given that they came from elsewhere is one of the few explanations for the asteroids orbits that didn't violate the laws of physics mm -hmm. you see that yeah so i'm saying this is a more unnatural phenomenon uh, in the vicinity of Jupiter. 19 of these things. And, uh, you know, could that be a pressure that is, uh, that, that is causing uh, accelerated disclosure? May, yeah. That, yeah. Well, with, okay. So we, let's do a little timetable here. We had a Muamua come through, which was startling, which that change speed. Okay. It sped up. Uh, that requires propulsion, right? Well, it, uh, it or, or some bizarre uh, interaction, like a like a near brush with some massive gravitational object, like a black hole that wasn't detected. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's a stretch. That that's it's a stretch. A, that's a major stretch. Now, uh, there's John Anthony West theory that there is a dwarf star out there effing with the uh, with our solar system gravity but that still wouldn't affect it that still wouldn't make things speed up uh yeah so th so they either hit some kind of weird time space thing right that made it speed up like a little wave like a gravity wave or something yeah or something made it speed up it changed course it changed course and something made it speed up so um, mr clot lou accelerate to warp three you know it's just this is the problem with with our science. I mean, listen, it's the human condition. Okay. I understand that. Uh, that's, uh, that could be very applicable to the times we're in right now. People have their bias and their prejudices and, uh, very much so in science, science has become highly politicized and yep. all of, all of academia has become highly politicized to where, I mean that, sorry about that. Um, where it really derails their thinking. Oh my God. I was listening to a geol. I know it's like, I was listening to a geologist on uh, YouTube, very exciting, sexy stuff. Uh, <laughs> but like they couldn't keep from getting political. You're talking about old rocks, dude. You're talking about old rocks and it's, it makes it very hard for when these very extraordinary, like brilliant things happen that they just shoot them down. That's the first, I, I know they need to do that. They need to, you know, shoot things down but when you have something orbiting the wrong way when you have an object that we detected at change speed then you need to start like thinking about like okay maybe there's something out there maybe there's yep. something out there um and we maybe we should i don't know spend a couple of bucks looking for it uh for the safety of our planet safety of our people just to see what's and, and pure curiosity. I think uh, I'm okay with spending tax dollars for, for uh, exploration and space travel. I've always been for that a thousand percent for that. Uh, and I think it's w worthy of consideration at the very least. And it gets shot down every time. And, but then, then the Navy comes out and tells us UFOs are real. It's like, it's a roller coaster with you guys. Uh, I, I don't understand. Um, so, I think it's, it's kind of serious. I think this is serious disclosure. That's why I was surprised Doomcock that like, how come I, that's why I, I was like, nobody talked about this. Yep. Nobody that I listened to talked about it at all. No. Nope. Like and that's weird. Yeah. Right? I was, uh, I was very, um, I was freaked out about it. And, um, I think it's, um, uh, indicative of something. It's just it a is. question of, of what, what, of what. Uh, that's bizarre, dude. I love it. I mean, there's something about this I really like too. Okay, I like weird. I like to know that we're not in this. Um, what's a word? What's a? I, I just that we're not in the. Uh, things aren't as normal as we think they are. Yes, things are not as mundane as we were led to believe. Yeah. That is a good thing. That is a good thing. Let's get to a couple super chats here. Um, we have uh, a lot of people here, dude. We have a thousand people watching. That's great. Wow. We're an exo zone. I'm excited. Jaeger bar. Very good. $5. Isn't it weird that the U S government confirmed UFO sightings and no one seems to bother paying attention, right? That's the weirdest thing. Jaeger bomb. 
think it's a distraction. Uh, what's worse than a UFO? That was his first thing in there. That's brilliant. Um, what's worse than a UFO? Uh, demons coming from the netherworlds. Um, yes. Uh, and uh, the uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Aldera, that, that's uh, worse. Alien invasion. Like, uh, yes. these were the good guys. They just came by to tell us we're all going to die. Then they left. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> they said we tried to fight them 3,000 years ago and we've been running ever since. Um, no, uh, yeah, I, that's okay. Once UFOs become real, that's the thing. I think, I think a lot of people know there's UFOs out there and they just don't want to deal with it. I'm not going to say you don't want to believe, and I don't want to get in everybody's head, but I think a lot of deniers are, it, it's just not important to my life right now. So it's not worth wasting a bunch of brain power because you do have to think you have to take that very serious next step now we've talked about this before once you've accepted it in your heart it's like accepting jesus in your heart accepting ufos in your heart once you realize that these things are real then you have to take the next you have to make you know ask the next plausible questions do they want to eat us do they want to enslave us do they want to help us do they i mean or do they just not care are we like a zoo are we a present planet like, what the hell's going on? Are they the engineers? Did they make us? Are they coming back to check on their project? I don't know. Because yeah, uh, no, it, no idea. I have a feeling the universe is uh, as above, so so below. So I think it's uh, it's a lot like it is here. I think there's factions. There's civilizations. They war. Some are peaceful. Some are not. And... Uh, maybe they keep each other in check or maybe they're so far apart. Um, I really liked, um, oh my God. I, uh, 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 hang on. I got to get the, my, my brain farting like crazy today. The George uh, R. R. Martin series that got canceled off of sci-fi recently. Uh, uh, night flyer, night flyer, night flyer. So the concept of night flyer where they were trying to get in touch with this alien race, like earth is dying but they detected this alien race and they've been trying to contact them, but they've been getting ghosted and they're so alien that it's almost like impossible to make, have communication with them, you know, it'd be like communicating with, uh, with like a dolphin, you know, it's just hard. Uh, and you know, I only watched part of the show, but I love that concept that felt real to me. Like if we did detect an alien, maybe we, if we tried to contact it, they would just like, see us as an insect like they wouldn't even try they're like you know they're just so beyond us that they wouldn't even bother they would just basically ignore us yeah like, it's possible you know maybe like be like the borg you know they're not going to attack you until you're a threat you know or or even acknowledge you i think that would be more real to me i don't know that's just me um because i think if there was going to be a conquering race out there that could come here i think it would have done it unless we go wilcock and there's some alliance out there protecting us you know well, it's, it's possible, yeah. you know, it's possible. It's possible that they're getting what they need, uh, uh, without bothering to conquer us. Yeah. Maybe they're just, uh, hell, they had that weird footage of that thing, like going up to the sun and sucking stuff off and, and leaving that massive object. Do you remember that? Yeah. And there was that, uh, UFO in Colombia that sucked out the lake. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, they just needed some water and they came and took it. Right. And yeah. of course they got bases at the, you know, in the ocean. If, uh, you know, I, I think they probably do. I mean, uh, we've seen a lot of, uh, USOs and a lot of weird, uh, weird stuff about, you know, underground, underwater, uh, uh, you know, glowing objects moving at, at great speed. So, I mean, if they can go down there, it's not hard to imagine they, probably just set up a base down there and we'd never we'd never know we we, we wouldn't that could be a freaking atlantis down there yeah we wouldn't know we don't even have it uh properly mapped uh and some parts are so insanely deep we'll never have them mapped so probably uh not. no that is a disturbing thought <laughs> That's, they're already you know, down there yeah it, it, I always thought about that. You know, I grew up next to a, an ocean, uh, still am near an ocean. I've been near the Pacific ocean. I've been within 
a few miles of the Pacific Ocean my entire life. So every time I went swimming, I went, God damn, this thing is big. (laughs) 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 Um, And it's kind of nasty, too. I don't know. Swimming in the ocean is kind of nasty. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, new Noel Morrison for ten dollars. You guys are amazing. I, I never get tired of hearing that. Thank you. You thank are you. Too. Thanks. Cheers. Uh, welcome and thank you for the ten dollars. Uh, Cardinal Sin for two dollars. Welcome back, Exozone. Hail wrenches and chat. Hail wrenches and chat. Hail, hail Cardinal Sin. Armchair Warlord for two dollars, and he sends uh, a fart, uh, cat farting hearts. It's always my favorite outstanding yes um yeah you know what we're approaching what should have been contact in the desert i'm kind of bummed i'm missing it uh ken kersey for five dollars didn't say anything just donated five dollars thank you ken i appreciate it perpetual punster for five dollars hail overlord gary wrenches and chat gentlemen did you see the tweet i sent you both about the usgs survey of the moon oh i'm gonna go look right now uh no i haven't i haven't seen it did you tweet did you who is it it? it's perpetual punster oh okay is it a message or a tweet i guess it was a tweet uh here i'll just i'll just check give me just a second yeah i'm looking uh i'm looking here um no i'm not seeing it was it a dm yeah was it a dm perpetual punster i'm not seeing it either yeah i'm not seeing anything unless it wasn't a dm and you know if it's out there in the vast ocean of twitter yeah good luck i didn't see it once just you don't have to give another super chat just go ahead and uh and let let us know what you thought at USGS Moon Survey. Uh, USGS releases first ever comprehensive geological map of the moon. Really? It's the first one? Hmm. That's weird. Well, I'd like to see if they have any of the structures that we've seen in the photos or if they've been edited out. I probably wouldn't edit it out. It doesn't mean that it's a true survey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, did he, uh, can you see it or? I can see it. I, here, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. I can't make it. You can't get in deep on it anyway. Like it's just this. Oh. Um, let's hmm. see. Uh, not now go away and there's a video tiny it's tiny yeah well that doesn't do any good i can see like this it looks like some 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 kid's bowl of cheerios yeah or or actually fruit loops it looks like fruit loops uh, that doesn't all the colors thing um it does uh I'll, i'll have to check it out in detail what I have noticed, I don't know if you guys have noticed, is earthquakes in weird places. Have you guys noticed that? Um, I, I I go to the USGS. Uh, oh, now when I don't. Uh, kind of a good look at it. But yeah, it just looks like a, there's a lot of big scratches on it. That's weird. Yeah. Um, okay. So, let me, yeah, uh, there's been a lot of weird earthquakes in places. Yeah. Um, that I have noticed. Uh, and there was, there's been a, like a bunch inland. Uh, there was a bunch. Yeah. The, okay. So Idaho keeps getting them. Texas has one. And these are bizarre places for earthquakes, folks. Uh, I keep an eye on that. I don't know. I think actually Yellowstone has a lot to do with, uh, with some of the inland ones. Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah, there's one in Texas, dude. <laughs> Oh shit! Where uh, uh, where was it? Oh, it's right at uh, it's at the Loving, New Mexico. So it's right at the border, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, shit. That's not uh, good. No, this is all the volcanic stuff up in uh, in California. We actually have volcano, but uh, yeah, been a lot of a lot of weird, clumpy earthquakes lately. 
and I always keep an eye on that for obvious reasons. Um, I don't like to think about that. Uh, so he said, I will check, I will check it out in detail. Perpetual punsters. I thought they would have done that sooner. You know, it, it's weird. Bird of prey five. Kapla hail exozone. You were missed. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, uh, tech guy for $5. Bob Lazar said he worked on this. It uses element, uh, one, one, five with three little reactors, create anti-gravity waves to propel literally rides gravity waves. That's right. Tech guy. And unless they figured out, uh, the core, I, I just don't think they could have. And, and Bob Lazar has said on record that we'll never figure it out. Like there's just no way we, he, he equated it to dropping a motorcycle off in the 1800s. They might be able to figure out how to turn it on, but mm -hmm. they wouldn't know how to, you know, refine the fuel to get it running or, you know, uh, maybe they can throw some alcohol into the engine and get it running, but they'll never get it fully running again. Um, early 1800s, we'll say, uh, saw three UFOs one after another before they were tic tac car sized and highly polished metal that reflected the sun set fly, uh, flying low over a busy road in London it says problem being, whoa, that would see, that's the stuff you never hear. Is it flying in a big old city? Right. Uh, now my theory on that doomcock is people in the city don't look up. They just don't, they're always looking down. So they might not see anything. Uh, the thing is the reason you see UFOs in the plains and in the desert is because you've got a big sky. You, you've got nothing to distract your, your eyes or anything. And it's just easier to see stuff. I don't so, know, man. I, I just, uh, when I saw my own sighting, um, it was very weird that it wouldn't like, I saw it before it would photograph. Like I, I took a picture at a certain angle that just shows a, a weird distortion or blur. And only when I got a certain point, did I actually capture what I was seeing on, on the, on the phone. And I just think that there may be uh, not only angular considerations to what people see, but also I think psychological uh, aspects as well. Like I might not have recognized it to take the picture uh -huh. if I hadn't uh, been dosed up on Valium. Yeah. Uh, it uh, took a veil off or took a little yeah, like one filter yeah. off. Not a yeah. Filter. And no, I wasn't hallucinating, obviously, since hallucinations don't, don't, don't show up on camera. They don't. And, you and don't uh, yeah. So, I mean, but, but maybe I would not have even seen it if I hadn't uh, been uh, in a, in a, in a weird, you know, kind of uh, relaxed place. Cause I, I'd taken a lot of it cause I was going to have a, a medical thing done. Uh, so, you know, and I've been looking, I've been looking my whole life, never seen a damn thing before that. So I think that there's psychological uh, aspects to it. I think it has to do with the angle uh, because it may be cloaked partially, uh -huh. uh, but they can't cloak in, in uh, like, you know, 360 degrees. Um, I don't know, but, but I, that would explain better to me than I just can't look, I would see it. I would see it. I, I'm looking for it. I'm not afraid. I'm not having a psychological, you know, aversion to it. If, if it's there, I'm going to fucking see it. And, uh, and I'm going to say something, I'm going to take pictures yeah, even even like whacked out, I was taking pictures. They're like, holy shit, that looks like a... And I'm like, well, it's probably a plane. I'll look at it later. And I kind of forgot about it. And then I was like, I went back and then, holy shit, did uh -huh. I have the goods? Did I have the goods? Holy shit, I've got a great picture. God, it's crazy. It is a yeah. great picture. I'm, I'm I mean, like you. I've tried. Uh, anytime I go out to the desert, I always put a couple hours uh, and get my aside and I go drive somewhere where there's no lights anywhere. And, uh, last time I was in Palm Springs, I drove like two hours out up into Joshua tree mm -hmm. with my, with my telescope and my binoculars and sat there and froze my ass off for three hours, couple hours looking in the sky, looking for UFOs. Saw lots of satellites and probably a couple of meteors, but, uh, yeah, not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. Yep. 
uh, we had a meteor shower a couple days ago, three, four days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually saw some of it in San Francisco. It was like the one day where the air was clear. Uh, it's not that we're that smoggy, but it's always foggy here. And right. you know, you can usually, you never see any stars here like ever. Uh, and it was like a clear night and I saw a couple, I was like, all right, that's cool. Um, Hail Gary, I have a cousin commander in the Navy and part of me wants to ask him about this when I see him next captain Mohart. I would, I ask my cousin all the time if he saw weird stuff. Uh, but he was in a submarine, but, uh, he, he did have <laughs> weird stories. He didn't see anything. Uh, my cousin was in a nuclear sub in the eighties chasing around Russian subs. That's what he did. They said they just played tag. Uh, and, uh, uh, he said there they definitely, uh, you know, there was anomalies down there. He uh -oh. always equated it to life and stuff, but, uh, he was pretty open-minded guy. He said there, yeah. Uh, and every, you know, if any of you guys know, or gals know an airline pilot, I'm sure I am positive. They have a story for you. Most yeah. of them usually do. Uh, oh God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, man, this stuff is out there. Oh, There's yeah. no doubt now. So any of you guys saying woo woo or anything about UFOs, uh, scratch UFOs off your woo woo list because the Pentagon just admitted it. Yep. So scratch that. We can still have uh, Bigfoot yep. and Nessie doesn't exist. Unfortunately, sadly, uh -oh. breaks my heart, but uh, Nessie's bullshit. Um, yeah. And Skinwalker wow. Ranch, definitely, definitely weird. It's weird. What? I have no idea what it is but it's weird. Uh, and you know, there could be giant sea creatures that live at depths, you know, yeah. unimaginable depths here and we'll never see them. Who knows? Who knows? Or alien bases down there. Uh, let's hope they're friendly. <laughs> be well, I, you know, we've been hearing about these things forever. And, uh, I mean, you know, the Roswell thing happened in 47, I don't know. I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm still not terribly concerned about it. It's like, no. No. you might as well just worry about, you know, slipping and in, in, in dying in the shower or getting in a car wreck. I mean, you know, life, why, hey, life happens. It that's, that's been my whole attitude towards this thing that shall not be named. I am completely unworried about it. I'm worried about other factors of it, but the thing itself, I'm not. I'm not. And, and if you are, that's okay. There's the, you shouldn't, I'm not trying to shame anybody or anything, but that's, I'm not Uh long live art bell. Oh, wait, for one, I got to finish that thought. Sorry. Let's hope they're friendly because if they aren't, we're really screwed. <laughs> um, John Zeller. I think they're ambivalent. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, our Fletch for $5. Re remember how Mulder was so disappointed that everyone has a camera yet we only have fuzzy images. Um, everyone having a camera, and that's true. Everyone has a camera now, and we do get better footage, though. The thing is, we do. We actually get better footage, but people question it, and they should because it's easier to Photoshop stuff now. But we've gotten some incredible footage out there. Well, I got a great picture. Yeah. I got and a couple of, of pictures, and and one of them, I mean, uh, just mind blowing. And uh, I guess it's time uh, next next Exo Zone. I'll go ahead and yeah, put that back up and tell the story again. But uh, no, that picture is spectacular. I mean, it's it's absolutely spectacular. Yeah. So we do have good pictures out there. Um, and listen, some of the early stuff are is still some of the best pictures. The the Oregon UFO was the McMinnville yeah. uh, <laughs> farm pictures. I think are absolutely mind blowing. Yep. Absolutely mind blowing. Those things are astonishing and iconic. You know, there's just some photos that live in my mind uh, that I've had it since a kid. You know, those McMinnville pictures. Oof, Imagine you did a whole exo through there. their head. Yeah. What was going through their head? I mean, this is the 50s. So that, you know, America was still filled. It was, a, we were all a bunch of country hicks. Okay. And Jesus Christ, see that thing over their head? It's like, what the hell? Um, Keller Ranch, you retracted your message. I was just going to get there. Oh no. What happened? A uh, hundred dollars. Super Jack Keller Ranch. Oh my ranch. Uh, repeat it please into the, um, did in, YouTube yank it or something in, in the regular chat? I don't know if YouTube yanked it or not. Keller, are you there? Just 
please repeat it in the regular chat. Do not, uh, please, no more, no super chat on that. I'm sorry. I was just about to read it. Um, oh my God. That's terrible. That makes me a little sick in my stomach. Um, so I'm waiting for Keller Ranch uh, to come in and say something there. Uh, but long live Art Bell, says Charles Thompson for $10. And uh, uh, long live you, sir. And thank you for calling in. We got a four hundred dollar super chat. I got a. Oh, by the way, keep going. I don't want to go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. From Jason Smoot, four hundred dollars. Wow, Jason. Jason, uh, keep doing what you do, guys. Thanks for the entertainment and the truth. You, Jason, thank you. I appreciate you. you. Wow, that is incredible. Uh, Wow, Um, I'm humbled, everyone. Thank you. Uh, and Keller, if you're out there, please put something in the chat. Tell me you're out there, buddy. Um, and Charles Thompson, thank you again. Long live Art Bell. Now, again, sorry, the ghost of Art Bell. How are you, Art? Uh, perfectly fine, sir. Um, Glad to be here. So is there, um, uh, uh, oh my God, creatine in heaven? I, I am contractually obligated to uh, not reply. Okay. Okay. That's good. Uh, <laughs> we miss you, Art. We miss our, I miss Art Bell so much. He's like the one celebrity I truly miss. Like I, I think about it at night because I spent so much time with that guy. Um, he was great. And, you know, it's hard to listen to his old stuff. Have you done it at all? No. It, it's hard for me to do it. It, it is. Uh, and I used to listen to that guy. I mean, in the nineties, every friggin' night from oh, 94 yeah. to 99, I listen, and, you know, despite his retirements, I listen to him every night. George oh, Nuri sucks. How Nuri does that guy, a phony. Yeah. such a phony man. No, nah, we could kick his ass. Totally. If we were on the radio, forget it. Uh, I, I am. <laughs> I, yes. I am open to Doomcock and I, uh, taking over coast to coast. If we could live stream it without breaking every 15 minutes, <laughs> that would drive me. No, nuts. hell we could break. I don't care. Listen, yeah. but we want the syndication. Yeah. It's like, you know, we're not willing to do a, you know, radio show at a local station for, you know, four hours for 50 bucks a night or something. It's just, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, that's what those guys make. Honestly. I mean, it's not, it's not a well-paid profession. You'd think it would be better, but no, it's it's yeah, pretty it's pretty poor, uh, and you only can make any money through you know multiple syndication or something, and uh, it takes a while to do that. So, yeah, I've known some guys. It's it's sad. Uh, uh, place to start with comics. Not sure what to read. Says Rob Killam for two dollars. Uh, easy, easy. Uh, pick up pick up justice on if you want just a single comic book pick up the killing joke by alan moore my uh, favorite it's Bat- batman comic it's uh it's a, an enclosed story you will get the background of the joker you'll get some background on batman and it will start your journey trust me it's called the killing joke you can find it there's multiple hard covers or you can get the comic itself yeah definitely get the killing joke uh, Maverick six, two, six for two pounds history, skinwalker ranch TV show. Any comments? Have you seen the show yet? No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the show yet. Maverick. I'm going to watch it this weekend. Uh, Doomcock and I have seen documentaries on it. Uh, I'm interested in seeing the history show, although I'm sure it's going to be just a lot of filler stuff. Um, there's a, actually I was, uh, I didn't know this movie came out and I can't wait to watch it. It's on Amazon prime. It's UFOs and nukes. It's like my favorite subject. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was out there. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't know how they do a whole show. I mean, well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, get I don't know how they would either. Dramatize it. I mean, but uh, yeah, man, that, that stuff is out there. I mean, they, they were turning things on, turning things off, scaring the hell out of uh, people doing tests. Almost like just saying, hey, you know, we're here and we can do this anytime we want to. So don't get smart either that, or they were just testing it for themselves. Just saying, and if these idiots start to destroy themselves, can we turn it off? Ooh, yeah. Okay. Done. Yeah. And the, the smoking dogs at Skinwalker ranch, my theory on those stands that it's, it's our brain can't process it. So that's how those guys saw it. 
whatever they saw, they saw the dogs Harvey smoking. phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it it could be. I don't. I jeez, that's such a reality inversion. That's weird. It it blows my mind. Yes. Um, I don't know what to think of that. That's the yeah. one of the weirdest and coolest things. And now I believe it entirely because uh, you know we spoke to the guy that uh, broke that story. Uh, and and I I think he's absolutely truthful. So there you go. Yeah, that guy, that was a trip. That was a good show, man. Uh, and uh, it was a great show. Um, evening, gents. Remember when the Pope came out with the same thing? It seems the Pentagon is just getting the same message. Says Kyle Gardner for five dollars. Did the Pope come out and say this? Did I miss that? I don't know. Maybe the maybe the Pope said. He would make me very happy if you would go ahead and disclose about the unidentified flying what thing about jigs before I have to get medieval on your ass. So maybe the Godfather, the Pope, the Pope. Yeah. Uh, he he laid down at the law. I'm having an offer I couldn't refuse. Um problem being for a pound ninety nine, Doom Loris, have you heard about il the electric universe? I, I have heard about the electric universe. We've talked about that a little bit. What do you, it's, uh, I don't know much about it. I mean, you know, it's, uh, there's electricity out there. So I don't know. I've never understood what, what kind of was the big deal about it, but, um, I know it's a thing and we've talked about it briefly, but I don't know a whole lot about it. I've not read much about it. Yeah. I have basic knowledge of it uh it's not something i've been into though i was kind of into the the we're all a bunch of you know we're basically a hologram for a little while but then i did then i wasn't how would you know i mean what, what, it, what i wouldn't what that's difference, what, you know exactly it was such a brain melt i'm like okay i'm a hologram fine <laughs> okay, i don't want to think about it anymore you might as well say you know we're a dream in the the mind of a snail in another universe or something. i mean you know, I mean, uh, funny thing I was watching, uh, I was prepping up a video that we might go over, uh, later and, and, uh, David Ike came on for a guy <laughs> ad beforehand and it was kind of funny. It was him being kind of funny. He's all, you know, people say, he says, people say, I say pretty out there stuff, but you know, that chair you're sitting in, it's not solid. That's pretty out there. And he was being kind of funny and cheeky. I was like, ah, that's, yeah. that's why I like David Ike. Um, that's and very, true. very true. Yeah. And it's true. And that's something I can't get my head around either is like this drawing table is not solid. Oh, absolutely. And I think, uh, God, I can't remember exactly who it was. I think it might've been Niels Bohr's who, um, developed a, a phobia, uh, for walking around and, and, and sitting on things because he knew full well that, uh, you know, atoms were largely empty space and he had this horrible fear that he would fall through uh matter uh which you know i think is charming but that is so like his brain is keeping him in place and if he becomes aware know. of it he just was he was just spooked him it just spooked him i think that's well, a sane reaction except of course he should have realized that uh you know the, the the thing about it is yes it's largely empty space but the energy contained inside these atoms, uh, causing these, you know, electrons to to spin at such a rate that the interval uh, is 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 it might as well be solid. You know what I'm saying? That it's it's traveling so fast. I mean, that's why there's so much energy in an atom, uh, and and you're not going to fall through it because it's kind of like you know if you're whirling, uh, you know, a, a tennis ball around it you know, the speed of light, it's going to look like a solid ring and you're not going to fall through it. Good you should have known that. He well, should have known that. Well, yeah, I, I love, yeah, I love the idea though, that like, if your brain ever figures everything out, you just, you know, you oh, vanish, vanish in a puff of logic. And There's if that. you were very, very unlucky, very unlucky, then you might, your atoms and electrons might line up with all the other ones that you're standing on precisely so that you did indeed fall through to uh -huh. some, to some depth, but that would be an astronomical. Uh, I mean, it just, you know, never say never, but that would just, maybe that's what happens. happens. To all those people of 411, their, their atoms just line up 
Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Well, maybe maybe the missing 411 is generating uh, these areas generate some kind of, of time anomaly or energy anomaly that slows down those uh, those revolutions and allows uh, matter to merge. Who knows? I don't believe that, but I'm just I'm just spitballing. No, that's hey, that's these are the kind of things my friends and I would use to ask each other like when we were on acid <laughs> but this is the kind of thing that i do just you know sober so that, yeah, that's my problem <laughs> that's my problem see it's uh, in my it's perpetual problem. state it's a, if i ever took drugs god knows what would happen i'd oh, be funny it's but bad. no don't do it um uh hail do not <laughs> exactly do hail doomcock great content as of late especially from you both God bless you and yours. Cheers, JPRPH1 499. JPRPH1. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say like everybody's been kind of killing it lately. Honestly, I think uh, some of the content from uh, from Doomcock and, and uh, others has been freaking top rate. So uh, definitely go out there and check it out. And if you, uh, and that's despite the algorithm like going completely against everybody right now uh so I don't know what the hell is going on man uh, it's just uh it's right now it's almost not even i mean i wouldn't worry about it because even if your your video does well uh you i mean you don't make any money <laughs> it's it's all just for scorekeeping at that point it's like hey it did well <laughs> you know yeah. um and that's that's fine i mean it's good i'm i'm I, i'm doing uh, i'm very grateful for for the platform um there uh we'll do this off platform again and i'm not going to talk about it other than this there was a video removed a couple of days ago that deeply disturbed me that not the video the fact that they took it off um and that is something uh maybe doomcock and i will record off platform and i'll tell you about it after the thing it's just oh god it pissed me off uh the grand inquisitor for five dollars beer beer virus kim kim jong un possibly dead Pentagon admits UFOs are real and it's just April. December gonna be lit as fuck. <laughs> Hail Nerd <Nardana, laughs> Hail Lord Doomcock. <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope not. I don't know, but maybe. Well, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you know, God only knows, man. God you know, only this, knows. This is how I know we're gonna be okay, folks. Because, you know, it's pretty serious and Grand Inquisitor's like, this is gonna be lit as fuck. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Shit, get real real <laughs> uh but then you know what again we've got like the last of us two doing this crazy shit with their like with their video game and you're like stuff can't be that serious if if did you hear about that they are they are finished they're fucking they're finished. Done. they are they're done, done before they even release i won't have a i will not have anything to do with their shit i don't know any spoilers so you can't strike anything I'm saying. I don't. I'm not even going to say the title of the damn thing. I just know I don't want it. I don't want it. You guys can go fuck right off. I am not. I got. I got actual games to play. I've got good games to play. I've got a back. I got more games to play than I can possibly do it. Witcher Three is, is is just devouring. It's just. I I I don't have enough time. It, it, it's huge. Witcher 3 is huge. And with all the expansions, shit, I'll be playing that for the next three years. So, you know, you can take your game and shove it. Yep. Shove it. Shove it. Shove your woke shit. And you know what? I'm sick of, of women that look like boys, okay? I'm just not interested. I like women that look like women. And uh, if that's a problem for you guys, uh, uh, fuck you. Okay. But then I just won't give you a dime. That's the feminism bending the knee straight up i mean if you want to if you want to i mean listen if you if that's an individual choice rock on sure, of course no but as far as 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 calling that female empowerment uh no <laughs> uh no and, uh, their version of female empowerment is to make women men that's yeah. it that's it's, it it's that's doing. it captain marvel acts like a dude a dick a doctor, dick dude doctor who acts like David Tennant, who's a dude. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. They, they are not acting like women. They are uh, empowering women to ape men. And that's it. And, yeah. and, and completely jettisoning all the wonderful attributes of femininity that uh, make women so wonderful. Uh, no, the message is uh, if you want to be a strong woman, you've got to kick ass like a man. Well, good luck with that. That's yep. not that's not what women do. And there's Fair. no reason why they should have to uh, aspire to masculine traits to be taken seriously or to be given credence or to be given a pat on the back. It's fucking insulting to women. And uh, I am a true feminist that believes that uh, women should have the entire spectrum of female behavior represented in their media, uh, including women that stay at home and and be moms and, and, and women who are, 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 you know, feminine and in, in relationships. And then also women that are jet pilots and uh, doctors and, and, you know, uh, Marines and, and what have you. I mean, but, but they, they really are just basically uh, women are, they, they treat women like they're men in drag. That's basically what they want women to be distilled to. They want everybody to be homogenous and, desexualized and the same it's basically 1984 the anti-sex league yep it, it, that's exactly it and the symbolism of the golf club not lost on me at all and or anybody else so uh yeah i did my homework on it because i didn't know shit about the game but uh i did my homework last night and uh then uh, some of our friends got st struck um on this platform, which was about the dumbest thing Naughty Dog could have done. And good luck. You just fired. You just fucking kicked the wrong hornet's nest. People have been kicking hornet's nests lately. I don't understand it. Doctor Who did it. Uh, Disney's doing it. Marvel's it fucking. They just will not learn. So, okay. It's on. That's all I got to say. Uh, Ship of the 13 Colonies asks Rich Suddy for five pounds. Um, well, that'd be cool. Uh, Dama was coming. I like Adama. I'd slap Lee if I saw him. I mean, I liked what? him, but he's such a baby character. What? Uh, Lee Adama? I liked Lee Adama, but he was a little bit of a baby sometimes, man, in uh, Battlestar Galactica. Oh, I, I mean, he was a good character, but god damn. Sometimes I was just like, ah, Lee. But I was invested in the story. I well, I saw, uh, yeah, I, I liked him. No, I didn't I have any problem with, with Adama. Uh, I, thought, I, I thought it was great, you know? I just took the dad's side. I like Edward, <laughs> Edward James. Yeah, I mean, as as somebody with you know father issues, I will I will say that I saw I saw both uh, points of view. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't imagine that uh, you know Admiral Adama was um, you know there for school plays and shit. Okay. No. So. No. Yeah. No. Have you guys read Anderson Affair? The Anderson Affair. Ask Chris Mead for two dollars. Mm. If it's about Gillian Anderson and it has photos, I'd um, like to. I'd like to read it, but no, I have I'm not. I'm, I'm about looking it. up right now. The Anderson Affair. So, Mister Anderson. <laughs> it's a book published in 1979. Uh, deliver. Uh, 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 uh. Trying to the Anderson affair. No, I have not read the Anderson affair. No, I don't even know what it. Yeah, I don't is know what it is. True? I can, is I can, it, it looks like uh, it. Well, the, what I read uh, here is something to do with uh, here. It's a book, but I'm not getting a quick plot summary on it. No, nope. yeah, I I don't know. I have not read it, uh, but I don't know what it is. Sorry, I have not either. Uh, I got three, I got 303 hours in Witcher three and DLC first playthrough says here in the steadfast for five Canadian dollars. Oh yeah, man. I mean, it, I, my mind is boggled and there's so many wonderful parts of the universe and, and so much depth in terms of, you know, inventory and, you know, hell there's a card game inside the game that looks pretty complicated. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm spooked. Uh, that is cool. Uh, I want to thank Drury Nitpicker for sending it to me. I appreciate it. Hell yeah! And my kids had it. <laughs> I had it. My, <laughs> my my kids all. You you own it, Dad. I'm all. I do. 
He's all, yeah, you bought it for me on Steam. I'm all, okay, cool. <laughs> right on. <laughs> I'm glad it's there. And then I looked at the Steam. I'm like, Jesus Christ, kid. How many games do you have? So, <laughs> you, know, you gave me out. I, I gave him like a bunch of Steam uh, gift certificates and stuff. So he's got quite the library, that little kid. All right. Um, so uh, again, Jason Smooth, thank you again for the $400. Jesus effing Christ. Uh, and our Fletch uh, shadow ship going to Ganymede and into the ice, says our Fletch for $5. Um, the, I What I saw was, uh, are you referring to the object that went into Jupiter? Uh, it's a very blurry picture, uh, but it, it's, yeah, something crashed into Jupiter recently. Big. Something as big as a moon. Well, like, Jupiter may have saved our ass uh, an or, awful lot by yeah. sucking things into its uh, gravity field and taking care of it for us. Um, so, you know, congrats to and thanks to Jupiter. Yeah, that's how Graham Hancock used to start off all his speeches, make, telling everybody to thank Jupiter. Really? For saving our lives. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's how, that's how he starts off a bunch of his. Well, that's cool. Uh, and we have some giant comets going through the solar system right now. And some of them might be visible in the, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, uh, mm. with the naked eye right now, there's a huge one with a God with a, with a tail. That's just freaking millions of miles long. Uh, and then oh, there's shit. another one. Yeah. Uh, but they're not coming, coming near, but, uh, uh a meteor did miss us by 19,000 miles. No, it was 19 million, right? 19, yeah, sorry, 19 million miles. 90,000. It'd be like, oh, 19,000. Holy shit. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, 19 million miles yesterday. Uh, You're right. They, exactly. Yeah. Um, Josiah Clinch uh, sent me a, a message about that. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Josiah. Mr. MBB333 uh, did a video on it. The guy, he edits too fast. I like him, uh, but he's always like, you know, he doesn't stay on a frame long enough. He's like, oh, oh, I hate that. and it goes, Pew! and I'm like, dude, that. slow down. Um, theory. Uh, these alien races watch our TV broadcasts like Doctor Who, and they are angry that Chibs destroyed, so they have to come to invade. That's, you know what? Let them in then. Grandpappy Fisk for $5. They said enough is enough. It Wouldn't that be funny? They land and they're like, uh, R.I.P. Doctor Who. Um, that'd be funny. And, and well, it'd be like not only Doctor Who, but Star Trek. They have attacked Star Trek, and Ray was a Palpatine. Prepare the invasion. They, they came from the future, and they said, you know, as bad as things were when The Last of Us Two was released, that was the turning point. So we're we're, <laughs> we're, we're trying to stop the release. That's a, the the aliens leaked <laughs> the information to save humanity. That's right. <laughs> Maybe the aliens <laughs> struck uh, the people. And to enrage and, and cause an uprising is possible. Yeah. Uh, caught in the gravitational influence of the elusive planet nine, says Andy P for Australian five dollars. Uh, planet nine, um, you know, it means like planet X, right? Yeah, what planet it used X. To be called. Now they're yeah. saying planet. Well, Pluto's a planet in my book, damn it. Yep, and always. yes, I know people will go ahead and say, well, technically, there's other objects that are larger. I don't care. I just don't care. It's Pluto's an emotional a planet. thing. Pluto's it a is. planet. Pluto's a planet. You can't tell me otherwise. Yeah, I'll, I just I'll don't care. What, I think what a planet, you know, I'll decide what a planet is. But, That's right. <laughs> uh, Trump's Space Force <laughs> lockdowns video confirmation. Um. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point, Matthew Matson. It took me a minute to get there. <clears throat> so we have the announcement of Space Force. Space Force. Uh, it just sounds like an eighties cartoon, but, um, you know, you, you do have to look at the timing space for space force. There's some little monkey. Space with some, the force, yeah. of course, of course, and no one can talk to a space. Of course. It's like a family that's in a spaceship and they have a, yeah, the pet monkey and they go on adventures in space. It's space force. That's um, right. uh, Hanna Barbera's space force. It's about um, space. It's about force. <laughs> space force <laughs> uh i think you do have to look at the timing of events i do uh i'm with you matthew so we get a muamua space force things orbiting the moon we get a lockdown we get confirmation of ufos nah, there's nothing going on you're being ridiculous there's it's not connected at all these are just random events that just so happen to happen you know in a certain 
order uh, right around each other. It's just a coincidence, folks. Uh, Nothing to see here. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. El Berzidente for five pounds. What's worse than a UFO? Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> um, any politician, honestly. Um, Lord Menace for $2. Hail, guys. Great show. Thank you, Lord Menace. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Carl Page for $2. I love the Exozone. Keep up the good work. We love it, too. We wish YouTube loved it more. Yeah, I know. We do it a lot more. We do it all yeah. the time. But, yeah. Um, yeah. What can we do? And I mean, you know, I, I, you know, maybe, maybe there's some kind of uh, radio syndicator out there that would like to contact us. Uh, we'd be open to it, but again, yeah. you know, we're not gonna. Uh, you kids are gonna start at the bottom. No, we're not starting at the bottom. So, I mean, we've got like uh, plenty of uh, demo tapes of how uh, well we do, how brilliant we are. Uh, kind of born to do this sort of thing. So yeah. We, we want a syndication package uh, from, from, you know, ground one, you know, yeah. day one. Uh, so, so speak to us out there. If you're looking for radio talent, uh, it's right here. Coast to coast, if you're looking to get younger. Oh, yes. And if you're looking for enthusiasm and knowledge and, uh, and not somebody who's phoning it in all the time, I'm sorry, man. Uh, you know. I have nothing personally against George Norrie, except he bored me and I stopped listening to Coast to Coast. I don't know. I don't know how long. How, when, when did he take over? Oh. 15 years? <laughs> 12 years? I haven't listened to it since. Mm. It's it's been that long and then he screwed over art in the end. Uh. Yeah, I can't I can't get behind it. I, I listened to, you know, Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's, you know, he's he's strange, dude. He's strange. I mean, he, he, he does the straight dope and stuff. And, and, you know, I, I love listening to him, but he's also weird. He's uh, volatile, sometimes attacks guests, uh, sometimes won't let him talk. Um, yeah. And, and, and flies off the handle a lot, which can make some entertaining. So, but I, I feel for the people that sometimes he dumps on. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I think he's pretty good. I like, uh, John B. Wells. <clears throat> oh, well, he was great. He's not on anything now, is he? He's got his own, he's got his caravan to midnight thing. I, I haven't listened to it in like a year. I still, oh, subscribe really? to it, yeah. but, uh, I'll, I'll go back. I like that. Oh, I need to listen. Yeah. He's good. Caravan to midnight. Uh, John B. Wells. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I don't know. I, I've been watching, uh, Mike Bear has been doing this weird thing on his channel, which is, it, it, it's really woo woo. It's not as Wilcock woo woo out there, but it's pretty woo woo. But I also insane. like, uh, you know, God, now I'm having a brain fart. You know, the guy that broke the Bob Lazar story. Oh, why am I? I can see his face. So he you're in, blanking on it too? I hate it when that happens. I know, man. I, I mean, I know his name. Uh, blowing like a Sirocco across the, you know, he has yeah. that in, where he would guest host. He was fantastic. Anyway, uh, he, he's. No, I'm going to look it up I now. Like uh, yeah, I can't remember. Oh my God. Uh, 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 George Knapp. Knapp. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just needed the one little thing. George, <laughs> George Knapp. Knapp. Yes. God. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's good. I like him. He's, he's, he's great. great. He, he could take over. Yeah. I think we, I think it would be fun to have us on coast to coast. I think it'd be pretty cool. Oh God, we would. Yeah. Of course. Now, as much as we've insulted Nori, forget it. Yeah. Cause who knows? He'd probably just phone it in. He'd say, that's very interesting. But no, it's, it's, he's here's Nori interviewing a guy. So I was like, Oh, so what do you got there? Well, I built uh, a time machine. It's a multi-dimensional time machine and I can go backwards, forwards. It's limitless. Oh, what color is it? <laughs> that's George Nori. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you telling him, well, actually, it's it's mostly uh metal. I haven't really bothered to paint it. What do you think about Bigfoot? Yeah. He's neat. <laughs> <laughs> he does that. He's, that's really that's neat. Oh, that's neat. That's you know, neat. that's really neat. And just look at his interviews, the beyond the belief TV stuff. It looks like he's falling asleep in between people's answers. <laughs> oh, oh my god. No, uh, and dude, I'm stop dyeing your hair, man. It's gray. It's cool. Uh, I'm not a fan. 
we're in a safe space. No, says R. Fletch for $2. Uh, yeah, maybe we're in like this. Maybe Earth is a safe space. Maybe they don't want SJWs invading the galaxy either. Maybe, you know, maybe there's a reason. I Could you blame them? You know, uh, they're like, hey, we don't mind all you other people, but you've got freaking SJW problem. You got a problem there. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Uh, Jack Random for, by the way, our flesh, thank you for the $20. Jack Random, thank you for the $20. Are UFO extra dimensional beings from legend? Hollywood is known to dabble in the occult. Push for female centric things is ritual. Female equals sever uh, severity and magic. Current events equal severity and government. Mother Dark, New Age Goddess cometh. Uh, Jack Random, Hollywood does practice in all kinds of weird occult stuff. That is. That is not underplayed at all. Um, but it's uh, it, it's not like, you know, your film editors and your key grips. Uh, no, it's the actors, uh, producers. Um, they, yeah, oh, they just, listen, it just got released. There were tunnels under the Playboy Mansion. Now you <laughs> go, yeah, sure, it's Playboy Mansion. Why would you fucking need tunnels? It's the Playboy Mansion. Everybody knows shit goes on there. What you, why would you need tunnels? In, in case shit went down there. I mean, you know? I, I Oh, I think shit went down there. Yo, I think nasty shit went down there. Different. I don't know, man. You know? So you're at 3 o'clock in the morning and some some crazy broad has grabbed a, you know, hoe from the, from the garden and she's pissed off because of something you said about her sister or something and you know, is it time to hit the hatch? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I read there was tunnels. Uh, then I heard on the radio that there was tunnels to people's houses. And, you know, sure. Whoa, I, what? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I don't, I know there was tunnels. There's, there was just tunnels. Now, anytime I see tunnels under a rich person's house, I go to a very dark place with that. I'll just say that. I, I, I go. I I, I, I I don't trust what goes down in Hollywood's. Yeah. Whoa. There's still, there's still another scandal in Hollywood. That's just waiting to come out and everybody knows it's true. Uh, and it happened to the BBC recently and they got away with it by the way. So uh, hmm. the grand inquisitor for $5. I know what's out there. It's Zur and the Kodan Armada. Zur. I, 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 I don't know. I know Zool, but I don't know Zur. I'm trying to Armada. I'm looking it up. It's not, it's not ringing a bell with me. Zool, Zool Armada. Zool Armada. It's from the last Starfighter. Oh, there you go. I think that I, was the original lyric. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was, it was well played. Well played. Uh, Occam's razor would, but by the way, thank you. It's grand inquisitor. I, I, I love uh, last Starfighter, and I haven't seen it in two decades. So <laughs> it's been since the nineties, since I saw that, I think it was on a VHS, uh, furious geezer for $5. Occam's razor would point out that oh, I got to do this in Spock. Uh, Occam's razor would point out that we see them here mostly in our atmosphere. Captain, our airspace, our sea. Why assume they are from somewhere else? It will be illogical. Because, Mrs. Spock, I've seen footage from orbit, from the space station, of these lights, these presumed vehicles, emerging from Earth's atmosphere and zooming out into space, and likewise zooming in to Earth's atmosphere. And they seem to be dodging some kind of particle beam Lends me to believe that there is some kind of effort to repel these visitors. And besides, we know the perils of space. That's what we're here for. That's why we're aboard this ship. So that was kind of a crazy question there, Spock. Fascinating. <laughs> Daniel Lindsay for $10. Thank you. He doesn't put anything in there, but he says... Uh, that's a donation that we appreciate. Thank you. Uh, oh boy. A polyme, a pol, okay. Apolyme minion for $5. My granddad 
or no, my grandma always saw UFOs every morning in Spokane, Washington. That's what it's Washington's a hot spot. That's where they were first. That's where the flying saucers was coined was in Washington, the great state of Washington. Um, you know, it's, it's beautiful up there and it just rains too damn much. I get the, I need a lot of sun. I kind of hate it here. I, I, that's the one thing I hated about San Francisco is it's not, not, you know, I'm used to sun. I grew up in sun every day. So I get that seasonal thing, or I used to get that seasonal thing. It took me years to shake it up here. Hmm. I could imagine being in Washington. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just <clears throat> weird because I really, really, really like cloudy days, rainy days. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I mean, maybe I'm crazy. But uh, I feel like I could persist in, in uh, prolonged periods of time in that kind of environment. I don't know. Cool. I don't know. I'm weird. <clears throat> you, you are, but that's good. I mean, we wouldn't want you any other way. Uh, <laughs> friggin', friggin' senders for $1.99. Do the ETs have the solution to uh, the thing that shall not be named? Plot twist! Um, or they sent it. So, they do. They have the solution, but it has to be rectally applied, mm -hmm. administered through the poop chute. Or, or maybe they send it and they want to see what happens. And maybe we're just a big <laughs> experiment. Uh, <laughs> they were practicing vaccinating us all this time. We thought they were just perverts. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you tell me to bend over, let me cough. Feel more romantic. <laughs> Buy me dinner. Uh, their blasphemy delicious mythos are Fletch for $2. Uh, they're going to ruin our mythos in a minute, baby. That's all I know. That's what Hollywood's doing. Problem being for pound 99. I was with my skeptical friend and he refused to look. Oh, he ref okay. So you're seeing a UFO and he refuses to look. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm talking about. I think there's a lot of people who just refuse to believe. There's a difference. I don't believe and I refuse to believe. Apolimi Minion for $5. They would come and visit my grandma. She would point them out to me. And maybe it's uh, what Doomcock was talking about. Maybe uh, there's a filter, right? And some of us have it and some of us don't. Maybe it's a consciousness thing. Yeah, or yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think I think a lot of people, um, I don't know. They just they just kind of go along. You know, they're they're kind of. There's a lot of folks in the world that are not comfortable with being outliers, are not whistleblowers, are not uh, people that will say the emperor has no clothes. And uh, I think those kind of people maybe will never see this shit. I don't know. But I'm, I've never been one of those people, so I, I have no baseline uh, to. It's inconceivable to me. But uh, you know, I, 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 my, my experience does not encompass all of human experience. I, I know that. I already yeah. said I'm weird, and I am weird. So I'm, I'm an outlier. No, listen, I, I'm the same way. I've always, I called out bullshit before everyone else did, and for the longest time, I thought. Uh, there was something wrong with me. Like I couldn't figure things out or, or, or I didn't fit in. And maybe that's part of partially true. But then as I got older and as I started calling out bullshit and once in a while I was right, I, I went, Oh, okay. So maybe I'm not completely insane and that's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with not being completely insane, just partially. But, uh, I think that's, uh, I think a lot of us here on YouTube or uh, in the chat and, uh, we're particularly good at pointing out stuff and asking good questions. It's all about asking the right questions, Doomcock. Uh, uh, and, I would think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rojo Diablo for ten dollars on the reveal of the UFOs. Is that is that they just acknowledged UFOs rather than extraterrestrial? So no one bats an eye if the Pentagon said, "Yep." not man-made this is aliens people would freak out that's a good point that's the way they uh, pointed it out absolutely if they said green men would people freak out that's the question i have for you in the chat if the pentagon comes out and goes okay so there's aliens piling piloting this 
there is a civilization somewhere. And that's all the information they give us. Do you think people freak out? Um, yes, if it depends on how alien they look. I mean, if yeah. they're just little green men or a little blue men and mostly look like, uh, you know, bipedal uh, hominids, then uh, no, people are not going to freak out very much. If they look like uh, horrendous, uh, you know, crustacean, gelatinous, you know, monsters from, you know, the 50s, uh, people are going to freak out some. You yeah. know, I mean, if they look evil, the, the people are going to freak out. Just remember, folks, in nature, uh, the things with the bright, pretty colors <laughs> sometimes <laughs> can be the most dangerous. So, uh, although some of the things that look straight up evil are like that fish that's got the little light on its head in the bottom of the ocean, that thing looks evil as fuck. So. Yeah. Oh, that thing is scary. And it's only, it's only about as big as your thumb. From yep. what I understand, <laughs> tiny, tiny little thing. I think uh, all those things down there are pretty small, yep. except the giant ones like the squid. The squid are crazy. Yeah. Uh, 13th warrior for $5. Arthur C. Clark, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's true. Uh, Colm costs for $5 super chat subsides YouTube, put up a PayPal link and a handful of coin goes directly to you. Just a thought. Yeah. I'm going to bring my stream, uh, labs back. Uh, enough people have asked. Yeah. It seems like YouTube's taking a little more than they were before, but, uh, that would I be illegal. I mean, they, well, I mean, I don't want to bring it up. Well, why the hell not? Well, I mean, they're kind of doing yeah, something. I don't know anything people. about it. Um, they're not itemizing anything. They don't send us anything itemized. Yeah, that's You're true. To. You're supposed to. There's a law in California because I know because we have to conform to it at the salon. Uh, when and they changed it recently about contract workers and stuff. You have to itemize stuff and pay people hourly now, and uh, because the tech companies were, I know this might come as a shocker taking advantage of the situation <laughs> so uh, was... yeah like bringing in people from poland on h1b visas to build the entire tesla plant for 10 bucks an hour <laughs> oh, <laughs> stuff like geez. that <laughs> God. um i i read that one it jumped on me and i read sir ruin of house roundhead what's up brother for five dollars speaking of the witcher and women, how did you like Yennefer in The Witcher show? She definitely looked good in that show, and the actress was good. I she won me over in that show. As a matter of fact, I because when I saw I saw a quartering video, and the quartering was talking about this, and he said, you know, uh, these people sound pretty SJW, and they did, they absolutely did in their Twitter posts and stuff. That's undeniable. And then he showed the actress. And then he, I saw a picture of Yennefer and I'm like, well, we got a little girl and then we have a woman. Uh, the thing is though, when you do see her filmed, she's a woman <laughs> she's yeah. a, and, and her performance was very good. Uh, I mean, it came very close to being too much, you know, focused on her too much, but, mm -hmm. uh, it was okay for me. I, I, yeah. Uh, that being said, I'm pretty sure they know why people are watching the Witcher and a lot of women watch the Witcher and it wasn't for Yennefer. Okay. I know newsflash. It was for Henry. Uh, crazy cat guy for $20. Three things started my interest in UFOs as a young child. The last, uh, to this day that lasts to this day, a comic book called UFO flying saucers in 1978, a TV show called project blue book and my grandmother's car getting tailed by a UFO in 1980. <laughs> that's a, that's a big one to put on there. It was like, yeah, it was a comic book and a TV show and an actual UFO. Whoa. That's like close encounter shit right there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, R. Fletch, bad dog, bad, bad. Oh, naughty dog. Uh, naughty dog is a, is a, it got fixed. It got yeah. Murdered. Gilded dog. Gilded dog. Uh, thanks. R. Fletch for $10. Uh, perpetual punster, $5. Hello again. Uh, speaking of 1984 and politically correct dystopian futures. Have you both read Kurt Vonnegut's short story? 
Harrison Bergeron. Harrison Bergeron. Um, I have not. Uh, no, I don't think I have. Yet. Have you read it? No, I don't think so. No, I might have to read that though. Sorry, man. Um, we need a Space Force 2220 TV show or a comic, says Grand Inquisitor for $2. We do. We do. Maybe somebody can do an Indiegogo and do it just like straight up Hanna-Barbera style. That'd be funny. Roger, Fl thank you, uh, the Grand Inquisitor. Roger Fleming for four ninety nine. You could tell George Nuri is such a fake and seems like he doesn't believe anything about the guests. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I think he came in to, uh, I think he initially came in to fill in spots for, for art. And he, he's, I don't know what he was doing before. Maybe he was doing woo woo before, but he, yeah, he totally seems like a, a total phony. Diego Flores for five, uh, five, we'll say pesos. Uh, thank the God Emperor that I have over 260 hours of XCOM 2 experience. Time to pre prepare the resistance. It might be. You never know. Thank oh, you very much. XCOM, I miss XCOM. My, uh, Used to play that on the old PC. Uh, I don't know where I can play it now. I mean, the original XCOM. There was also XCOM uh, uh, Terror of the Deep or, or something like that. It was an underwater expansion. Uh, I haven't played XCOM 2 or, or the new XCOM, but I really like that turn-based stuff. But man, it was hard. That stuff was hard. I never really got very good at it, but uh, it, was, it was cool. It was weird and... And it, it gave a great sense of world building uh, to me. Yeah, that's my favorite part of any game. To be yeah. honest with you. That's why Red Dead Redemption was just the shit for that. Oh, it was, it was the original. original. Yeah, the, the original. One, mm, yeah. I don't know, man. It, I don't know. They they got too meticulous. I mean, any any game where I have to regularly bathe and shave and cut my fucking hair and, and you know, and, and pack for, for the weather... It's like that's too much like life. It's it's too yeah, it's getting yeah. it's getting boring. I just want to ride around and and shoot stuff and just assume that when I camp and stuff, I'm doing that stuff. I don't actually want to do it. It's yeah. boring. What the hell? And and also one of the things that like you you know you you commit some kind of bad act or or something out in the woods and you know you never see them, but there's like a witness that suddenly like you know hey look. He, he he done it. He done it. And then all of a sudden you've got, you know, the law coming down on you and you're not in the middle of the wilderness and shit. And it's like, no, that's, that's not all right. Yeah. That's bullshit. Weird. Uh, Calamity Psy Shipyards for two New Zealand dollars. I had contact with shadow beings when I was a kid. Whoa. Details, Whoa. man. <laughs> or well, sorry, lady. I don't know if it's a man or a lady. Uh, yeah, a good, good, good friend of mine saw a shadow person. That's when I started believing in him because I always thought it was just kind of a weird Art Bell thing because he 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 only started talking about shadow people later on in his broadcast. If you go to his early broadcast, he did not talk about shadow people until later. And uh, my friend uh, saw one right, uh, basically materialize in front of him in his bedroom, in his house and thought it was his wife started talking to her and this this shadow being looked turned around walked away and then he rolled over and his wife was on the left hand side of him on the bed and he uh -uh. freaked the fuck out so yeah and this is a guy i trust uh completely <coughs> so um yeah now i kind of believe in him and i think they might be just imprints from another dimension they might yeah like, they, they might well be uh, I just wanted to let you know, man, I got about like five, 10 more minutes. No problem. Yeah. I'm just not feeling very good today. No, no. Hang as long as you can and dump. We'll jump, get you out of here in a few, a few minutes. Um, uh, MP, uh, M, M Philibin MP 2019 for $5. Do you two miss the old school X-Files episodes? And does the original myth arc of the series seem quaint or prophetic compared to today's reality it it's kind of is it prophetic well, I don't on, think, what? on x files uh, you, basically the overall theme the myth arc uh you know it it got scuttled in the end that's where that's where i will call it quaint 
at first they were setting up some shit that I was that I bought into, but it just got weird with the long hair. Yeah, they, I don't know. I mean, he laid out a thing where he was explaining the whole the whole plot and everything, but I, I I just felt like the mythology episodes were bungled. Ultimately, I think they mostly are. The thing about the X Files is the standalone episodes. Yeah. And, um. Yeah. I don't know. The whole well, like I saw the movie and still didn't know what the fuck was going on. Now you know? what? What they the biggest mistake Chris Carter made was explaining too much. I think he should have kept it as vague as hell. Like there are aliens, and maybe your final episode of the X Files is Mulder taking off in a UFO. I think people would have been happy with that. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, and and don't show that UFO until the very end. Uh, give them a, you know give get a good shot at it. You can see a part of one, but uh, you know less is more, people. Um, Apple well, Oh, sorry. No, I just, I, I would have, I, I, I think they owed us, uh, an explanation, but not, not everything. Like for instance, you know, the aliens themselves could have remained mysterious. Yeah. Uh, but I think as far as this cancer man and all the governmental stuff and what they were doing, uh, I think, I think they owed us an explanation. Yeah. They could have come up. All they had to do. It's all there. Okay. If you listen to art bell, for any period of time, or you listen to any of the woo-woo stuff that we listen to, there are a thousand stories you could you can adapt those into comic books. As a matter of fact, like the one comic book and story I did put together over God two decades was all mined from Art Bell. Every uh, bit of it was mined from Art Bell from uh, stuff he talked about, and I mixed it, you know, and I mixed up genres and stuff, and had dude, there's tons of great stuff. Like even you know, Wilcock is woo-woo. But if you listen to him, it sounds like he's just breaking down a fan, uh, you know, a, a space opera for you. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, you know, that we definitely should have gotten something we didn't. Uh, once my grandma passed, uh, they stopped coming to visit, says Apolimi Min Minium for $5. Um, whoops. That was my. Uh, what well, star that was my star wars dvd <laughs> it fell down oh uh, okay. it's it's hey those are the um that's that uh it's the original cuts um oh the harmies yeah yeah odin sent it to me hail odin um uh uh uh, uh okay so that's weird um uh, maybe it's, again but that's not the first time we've heard that that people have a connection to him whitley streber and others and yeah maybe she was in contact that's kind of a cool story. And, you know, they didn't harm her. They just came and visited. What? But what did they talk about? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Uh, Jaron Kucha for $5. Folks are more into freaking out over the orange man than alien life visiting us. That's true. We are simply too small petty as a society thanks to social media. Uh, I mean, social media exposes what we already are. I mean, it's that's all it is. It puts it on display. It, yeah. Social media isn't the cause. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of like people, uh, blaming the toxic fandom. It's like, no, the fandom's always been that way. And that's why the world, that's why I don't watch the news folks, because, uh, the world has always been this insane and it's always, you know what? It's equal parts, beautiful and peaceful. Just remember that, you know, uh, you there it seems like the world is freaking out and then you go outside and it's crickets i mean because that's what your world is it, it depends on the individual so i'm not saying like hide your head in the sand uh, but there are certainly better ways to get information than the mainstream media that is the worst place to get information right now it's yeah. uh th uh they have absolutely failed us as an institution and quite frankly uh, it's scary that we have to get rid of the media now, uh, find something. So, well, it's being replaced. See, the, that's the great thing about the free market is the people will just go somewhere else. And they are, they are. And that's a beautiful thing. But uh, yeah, we, we still are. We're, I mean, we're, we're very primitive still. PA Grunt for nine ninety nine. I did a, I did a lackout dive at night off Hawaii. You wouldn't believe the freaky stuff I caught on video that came up from the depths of the Pacific. Uh, do you have it anywhere on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, I'd love to see it. Yeah, PA Grunt, that'd be awesome. For God, I'd love to. Hell yeah. 
Hey, it's nine thirty, brother. You want to my time? You want to shout out your channel and uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, dude. Uh, Thanks for on. No, man, I, I I enjoyed it very much. Uh, my channel is uh, Overlord DVD, so please subscribe if you haven't. Also, uh, the Harvey Zone uh, is my where uh, my live streams go to live after I do them. And unfortunately, I'm way behind on posting them. I apologize. Uh, it's just uh, yeah. Um, also I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash doomcock. That's where Harvey posted his, uh, Cthulhu's realm podcast discussing this very stuff, uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, Star Trek, uh, DVD commentaries, full length movie commentaries, and, uh, many, many more things. I open up my toy chest and show people all my toys and, and stuff. It's super cool with commentary on that as well. Uh, and also subscribe star.com slash doomcock as well. I think that pre, oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, that that's it. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, Sunday, uh, inquisition. Yes. Uh, yes. Finale. Thank God it's over. Hey, do you yes. want to cover Batwoman? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. No, please. Not. And, uh, yeah. And you know, then we'll talk about what our return time will be. Cause, uh, I'm playing around with, we got to talk about going a little earlier. Yeah, That's definitely going a little earlier. Definitely yeah, asking for that. So thanks brother. I appreciate yeah. you. Absolutely. You man. Thank you. And uh, hail to everybody in the chat and Exozone will return. Thank you all. Yes. Later brother. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. I hit the wrong button. Shit. <laughs> okay. Let's uh I meant to share the chat. That was a boomer move. Let's get that up there now. Um Yeah. There we go. Okay. Back to the Q&A. Mark C, I'll have to get my Barlow's guide to aliens to see what uh our new neighbors most resemble yeah mark c uh or you can watch there's a linda molten howe video out there uh where she breaks down all the multiple species of aliens uh mark c again for five dollars i'm working on a space force type comic called the adventures of dirt danger and the space rangers yes you're doing that 40s uh style one right uh that will be awesome i will back that brother you just you just keep me posted on that agent pepsi one Hail you all 1978 show project UFO, not blue book. Um, I thought it was project blue book. Was it, is it called project UFO? I remember it being blue book, but you're probably, you know what? I will. I, uh, I, I, it's been a long time since I've seen it. So I will say you're right. Agent Pepsi one hail. Thank you very much. Uh, Christopher Rickett. For 10 Canadian dollars. Thank you, gentlemen, for the entertainment while I work. You are welcome, and I'm glad you're somebody's at work. So uh, that's good. We need the world to go around a little bit. Son of the Wolf. Uh, and, you know, I will continue. We will continue. Uh, because, uh, yeah, last night sucked. I was uh, getting my... I was getting ready to do a nerd erotic nooner at night, and I lost my internet for 14 hours. I had to like read a book. I had to like talk to my kids. It was terrible. Don't ever let that happen again. Just kidding. Son of the wolf for $5. I saw a UFO back in 2007 experienced lost time because of it. That is not unusual. And that is weird. Um, we need to, uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do an exo zone. We're going to do a call in exo zone. Now, listen, uh, my, the art bell shows I liked the least were, or the Friday night open lines. I still like it when there's a topic, but I don't mind when there's open lines at the end. So I'm going to see if uh, one time, one night when we can dedicate some serious time to the exo zone, like three or four hours, we'll do like a, a topic for a couple hours and then we'll, we'll take your calls and we could do that on Streamyard by sharing just the link and uh, working it out. We might need a uh, but yeah, I'd be open to that. That'd be fun. So that way you can share your UFO experience. That would be great. Rojo Diablo for $5. Check out Xenonauts, successor to XCOM. No more throwing guns at aliens. Uh, and that was for Doomcock. 
I hope he's still listening though. Uh, Hecatat's daughter. Uh, thank you, Rojo, for $5. Hecatat's daughter for $10. Did I or did I not tell you to take care of yourself, Sweeney? Uh, he, you must not have. Uh, no, he is taking care of himself. Uh, Hecatat's daughter. He's taking care of himself. And I can't see this bottom one. I hate it when it does this. Why does it do this? Uh, 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 Apolimi's minion for two dollars. She never told me she took those with her. Ah, maybe it was private. I understand that. That's cool that she shared it with you, though. So, thank you. Uh, Mark C, do you want to know the story? Check your DMs, you may uh share it with the chat. Um, let's see, Mark C, that is uh, you know what. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the Adventures of Dirk Danger and the Space Rangers versus the Saturn Men. The last world war between Euro-Asia and Transamerica ended with the Cadet Danger. Stopped Euro-Asia's doomsday weapon that saw a beam that grabbed meteors from the rings of Saturn and hurled them at Transamerica. Danger, now captain of the Space Rangers, has formed a base for him and his men on the moon. It's purpose is to stop stray meteors that may still be on their way to earth during a visit by the world president and his assistant dangers former love marlena the station is attacked by a group of ufos one gets through the defenses kills the president and kidnaps his ex dirt tracks them down to titan saturn's, saturn's largest moon in an effort to save her only to find that the aliens saw the gravity beam from earth earth's final battle as an act of war and plans to destroy the planet can he save the woman he loves? Can he get back the time to, or can he get back the time to fight off an invasion? Or should he stay and negotiate? Can the aliens be reasoned with, or is it something else, or is there something else going on here behind the scenes? Kind of what's going on for real life, trying to push Earth into another war. And that is the great Mark C. That's what he's working on. Back that book. Let me see it. Uh, can't wait. Thanks, Mark C. All right, um, we will. We'll end it with uh, with a little video, a uh, little twelve minute video. Uh, hopefully, I won't get too much trouble for showing this. Uh, from Randall Carlson. Uh, this is like the shortest thing you'll see on Randall Carlson, and this is uh, this is a brilliant man. He is he is uh, he, he's in construction. Okay. He, I think he owns a construction company. So he'll build your, your, uh, your patio, uh, your patio cover. He'll build you a deck. Uh, he'll build you a deck around your jacuzzi. Um, and he will also, and he also just so happens to be one of the most brilliant, brilliant minds, uh, out there as far as, uh, geology is concerned. This guy is figuring out stuff that geologists, with uh, master's degrees, doctor's degrees, professors, refuse to figure out, refuse to look at because he walks the field. This man walks the earth. This is a guy who stares at a rock and wants to know where the fuck that rock came from. And he's come to conclusions that meet up with Graham, Han Graham Hancock and yours truly, that this earth is impossibly old and there's no way that we carried around sticks for hundreds of thousands of years and just decided, hey, hey, dude, what? Let's farm. Okay. No, we didn't do that. Now, recently, a spear, a throwing stick has been discovered in uh, Northern Europe. It was 300,000 years old. So you're telling me we carried around sticks for 300,000 years? No fucking way. So the answers are out there. There's been a lot of earth movements and it's pretty much cataclysms. That's the answer. It's a scary answer. It's just, and this is why people probably don't cover it. It's a very scary answer. Also, the reason Randall Carson gets suppressed is his narrative goes against the environmentalists narrative of uh, global warming, global co cooling. Now, is... Uh, is the earth going through some changes? Absolutely. It always is. It always is. Um, does that mean throw trash out your door? No, absolutely. Recycle, do all those things. Um, we need to, uh, 
one day get off uh get off petroleum and and stop uh clogging up our air but but electrical uh i used to work uh, with tesla electrical vehicles have their problems as well just like disposal of batteries and disposal of what's inside of batteries which is pretty nasty by the way so uh let's take a look at this video uh we go oh i boomered it hang on big introduction i've done fucked it up There we go. And I saw this video. I'm like, what is this? Like some PBS shit? What's going on here? Uh, but it's pretty interesting. There has been some kind of a universal system at use in the ancient world. And these various cultural groups, whether it was the Egyptians or Sumerians or Mayans or the Hopewellians or the megalithic builders, had access to some universal system from some source that was outside their own cultural context. And I suggest that the source of that goes back into deep time that takes us back beyond the threshold of known history into the realm of mythical history, which means we're going back like into the Ice Age, back into the Pleistocene, to use the geolog geologist term, back into the, to the deep recesses of the human tenure on planet Earth, uh, whose only memory has come down to us, not in the form of recorded history, but in the form of myth and epic story and legend and so forth. Because as it turns out, if we, and this, this is again is a, is a good topic for the sacred geometry class, when we analyze Plato's description of Atlantis, Plato basically gave the, sink, the date of the sinking of Atlantis as 9,000 years prior to Solon, the, the Egyptian, the, the, the Athenian poet and statesman, Solon, did a 10 year exile in Egypt. And it was Solon that brought back the tale of Atlantis and presented it to the, to the Greeks. And Solon basically made that journey around 600 BC. So if you add the 9,000 years to the 600 BC, we come up with a date of about 11,600 years ago for Plato's date for the, 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 the demise of Atlantis. Well, it's very interesting that the date 11,600 years has been independently discovered by geologists looking at the tempo of various catastrophes that have occurred on Earth. So what's always, this is always fascinating. It's always been a fascinating subject to me since I was a wee little kid. And I think it might have came from when I was digging around in my backyard at my house in La Costa, California. Where I grew up, I grew up on a street called Levante Street in Carlsbad, but uh, it's a little community called La Costa. It was a resort there with uh, tennis courts and big, uh, big championship golf course. And I used to get in all kinds of trouble down there. But uh, when I was a little kid, I used to play with my little Tonka truck and dig little roads, and we'd have shells everywhere, like freaking shells everywhere. And I never like it, so it was just I'm like. I, how'd these shells get here? Uh, I'm six miles in from the ocean. And my mom said, well, oh, just used to be ocean here. And I it used to trip me out. So, um, and, and, and I just, I've, and I watched in search of when I was a, a younger too. So that started my journey to the woo woo. Uh, I found this guy, uh, through the Joe Rogan podcast. And if you, he's got, uh, three, uh, probably the three best Joe Rogan podcasts are with him and with Grandel Carlson and with Graham Hancock. And of course there's all a uh, bright insight. It's a pretty good channel too. They, he mines a lot of information from Brian Forrester and uh, I'm a, I'm a huge Brian Forrester fan and Graham Hancock fan and Randall Carlson fan. Basically geology is starting to kept catch up with mythology. Um, and 
11,600 years ago is a very, very important date. Uh, that was a major, we're, I can't go over this whole video, but I'm going to, because I, what this is, by the way, this is Gaia doing like after school stuff. I'm pretty sure it's Gaia who's behind this. Um, and yeah, so it, it's fascinating. Now people hear Atlantis and they go, oh, fucking come on. Uh, I don't think, uh, I think Atlantis is a symbol for something, uh, but I completely believe that there was a civilization that was advanced. I don't know if it was advanced as we are. It could have been. Uh, that has been erased. As a matter of fact, I think it's happened multiple times. I think there have been uh, maybe a couple. We don't know. There's a huge chunk of time where we know jack shit about. Now, geologists will, are into gradualism and blah, blah, blah. And of course, there's a lot of stuff that can you know shoot down these theories. But there's a lot of weird stuff out there, too. There's tons of weird stuff. Uh, there's no way we can date the stone, uh, the foundations of uh, Baalbek and uh, just or, or even uh, the temple uh, in Jerusalem. There's giant stones that no, we can't we can't carve and lift today that are out there. Uh, and it wasn't done with chicken bones and bronze and slaves. It wasn't. There's just no way. So they must have had something. They must have been able to do something uh, and, you know. Maybe it's scientific. Maybe not. We don't know. The pyramids are insane. They're absolutely insane. Uh, and they were not a tomb. What they were, I don't know. But this guy really takes a practical approach to things. And, you know, his lectures are very long. Very, very long. But they're fascinating. They're great to go to sleep to, too, by the way. And to those catastrophes is where I'm now going to turn. Catastrophes in the time of man, the tempo of global change. What I've done here is I put a time bar that goes from the present right here. This is us now. This is today. Right here is May 3rd at 4 o'clock. Is it 4 o'clock? That's right here. And this is 150,000 years ago. And the reason I used 150,000 years is that some of the earliest skeletal remains ever discovered of modern humans date back to 150 to even to 180,000 years. Skeletons that appear to be indistinguishable from a modern skeleton, which suggests that modern humans with presumably equivalent intelligence to our own were present on the planet at least this far back. So here we've got 150,000 year time span. You'll notice this little red bar at the end. That red bar represents the span of recorded history which is basically the advent of Sumerian cuneiform writing. So if it turns out that there were modern humans living through this whole span of time, why is there no history? Well, now you got to do is turn to these various things that I've put on here. These are events. Check this out. And I used a certain criteria for these events. And here's the criteria I use. I began studying the record of geological change, climate change, environmental change. And I focused on events that could be considered catastrophic. And catastrophic to the extent that were an event of an equivalent magnitude to occur now, it would basically in civilization as we know it. That's the criteria I use. What would, be, what would be the magnitude of an event that it would take to terminate our modern industrial civilization? That's the criteria that I used. Then I began to search through the record of all of the events that would be of that magnitude or greater. And the events that I found so far have been entered onto this graph and they're listed all here. You can see them. And how many do we have here? And this is not complete necessarily, but we have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of them in 150,000 years. So at least 16 times in the last 150,000 years, there have been climate or environmental or geological catastrophes powerful enough that were they to occur today would essentially put us back into the stone age would essentially 
if you think about some of the small catastrophes we have seen in the last few years from the, the, the destruction of New Orleans to the great tsunami, you know, to some of the big earthquakes that we've seen, you know, New Orleans is still not recovered. But you've got to imagine what would happen if an event that was one order of magnitude greater than Katrina happened. By, by that, I mean 10 times worse. Let's say that we had 10 cities decimated to the extent of New Orleans. We could certainly recover from that, but it would be a major effort to do so. Now, what if we were talking about two orders of magnitude? Let's say, to put it into a rough equivalency, an event that could, could cause the decimation of 100 major urban areas. Could we recover from that? Questionable. Now, let's go three orders of magnitude. And now we're talking about the equivalent of a thousand major cities completely decimated. Okay, at that level, three orders of magnitude, that's what these are. Those are events that essentially would be three orders of magnitude. Once you begin to ponder this, it becomes apparent why there isn't a record, an extant record of what's been going on for the whole time that we humans have been here. Now, at this point, you probably haven't tied this in with what we've been saying before, other than I'll point out a few things to you that should be onset of the late Wisconsin Ice Age, 26,000 years before present. Remember the great year and the processional cycle? Add about 80 years to that, we've got 26,000. Of course, 26,000, you consider a figure plus or minus a few centuries. You got he starts getting into his numbers and you can always I'll link this video uh, and but that I wanted to show you uh, that's serious shit and that's something to think about uh, what ended our ice age so quickly what began it what ended it why did it fire back up again a thousand years later and then end again um they're still trying to figure this out robert uh shock with uh the late john anthony west had a theory that there was a plasma event with the sun and uh randall carlson and graham hancock used the it's the comet theory that a broken up comet hit the ice shelf uh in in um over uh, north america causing extraordinary flooding that created the washington scab lands i will go one further i would say if you look at the western united states on google earth just take a look at it when you're on google earth someday i do a lot of google earthing by the way and it looks like it melted now i'm not saying that all came from the the ice age and uh, but like look at it it most definitely looks like it was a lot of stuff was washed away um, once I watched a Randall Car Car Carlson video and I knew what to look for when you can see what, <clears throat> what, uh, you can see evidence of tsunamis everywhere. And you look for these little chevrons, these little V like chevrons, uh, that you can see that uh, almost every coast of every continent at some point in time has been hit by a major tsunami, which creates these little current ripples. And you know how you see them in a river or a riverbed. They're very small. Well, there's giant current ripples in the scab lands in Washington, in Idaho. There's also giant cur uh, uh, current ripples uh, on at Madagascar. And yeah, so it's it's fascinating. It's a freaking rabbit hole you can go down to that, that, that I've spent hours. I've lost hours on that, I tell you. But uh, yeah, that, that shit is fascinating to me. So um, when you look at it uh, related to like what we're going through today. I mean, it's still serious. Uh, you know, I always try to look at the glass half full, except when it comes to entertainment, which is pretty fucking half empty these days. But uh, yeah, let's get to you guys real quick. Uh, do, do, do. Loquacious primate for $10. If you were offered the opportunity to visit an alien civilization, but the trip of thousands of years required stasis, uh, required stasis, could go wrong and leave you awake but paralyzed would you do it at what odds um if i did not have a family i would go if i didn't have like any earthly attachments uh most definitely i would go i would go to mars i would do all that stuff 
even if it meant dying. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of weird like that. Uh, and I used to be like that when I was young. I never thought I would have kids, by the way. Never thought I'd be the kind of guy who would settle down and have him have a wife and kids in a house. It's inconceivable, inconceivable to me. Uh, I was, uh, I just thought I'd be on a freaking motorcycle or in a car driving around aimlessly by myself. I just never thought I'd be, uh, I'd end up like I did. Uh, but who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, I would, if I didn't have family, uh, Stargate 404 for five, thanks loquacious, uh, for $5 Stargate 404. The UFOs are North Korean King Jung, Kim Jong Un is an alien. Uh, no human could eat so much and smoke so much and still be alive. Wave to our North Korean Lords. Uh, I will, uh, you know, everybody using zoom, make sure to wave to your, uh, Chinese Lords, by the way, cause they are watching. They are watching also all of the drones. We, we were apparently gifted a bunch of drones are some of our police departments from China. Why? Why? Diego Flores for two uh, pesos. Have you read uh, the giant book series, the giants book series? Um, I haven't, I haven't, but I'm, uh, but I, uh, which one are you talking about? Are you talking about like, uh, now I'm completely into the whole theory that there were giants, uh, the Nephilim and stuff. I don't know if it's true, but, uh, that's where I actually mined a lot of information for my story. Uh, the, there was, the, there's a, there is a theory out there that there was a race of giants. They were 11, 5, 11 feet to 16 feet tall. They had red hair and they lived in North America and they were cannibals and stuff. Uh, and they did a show on History Channel trying to, trying to, uh, you know, track them down. L.A. Marzulli's done a lot of that stuff. Uh, I'm into that. But I don't know the, what giants you're referring to. If that's the giants, yes. I'm forgetting the, the guy from Massachusetts, uh, forgetting his name. He does some lectures and stuff. He's pretty good on it. Uh, famine, earthquake, storms, the beer bug. We are in the opening scene credits from Flash Gordon. We are. Ming the Merciless is coming. I like to play with my things. What do we have for us today? Earth. Gordon, he's alive. Uh, Jack Random for $5. I love Flash Gordon. It is a beautifully terrible music movie. And they're, uh, they're doing a 1-6 scale. Uh, Ming the Merciless and uh, Big Chief is doing it uh, and Flash Gordon and I am most definitely, definitely getting those uh, when I can spend money again. Uh, survived 16 events. Okay. Says R. Fletch for $2. Uh, the events were spread out over hundreds of thousands of years and some were more severe than others. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, it's just something to think about and listen to the, to his complete lectures. He gets into this thing called sacred geometry, which took my, it took me a long time to get my head around it. Uh, but it's basically uh, kind of a synchronicity to life put to numbers is the best way I can put it. Uh, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. I'm not saying it, uh, I believe all of it, but uh, it's certainly interesting. And he does it in a very practical way. That's not uh, too woo-woo to me anyway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, aliens and overlords and uh, North Koreans, uh, we're going to end this broadcast tonight. I would like to thank everyone who has joined. I would like to thank all the mods out there. I'd like to thank our future ruler of Earth, Doomcock, for joining me. We will be back with the Exozone. This is absolutely one of the most fun shows to do it's nice to take a break from uh identity politics and stuff like that and just talk about some weird shit uh again uh the disclaimer is we talk about it, we entertain any subject we'll talk about anything uh that we're allowed to here on youtube uh but it doesn't mean we believe everything but it's fun to talk about it's fun to consider possibilities uh i try to stay as open minded as humanly possible about a lot of things. Cause I've seen a lot of weird shit in my life and I'm sure you have too. That's uh, not explainable 
And that's a good thing. We don't want everything to be explained. That'd be boring. Wouldn't it? Uh, Giant series are a book that starts with the discovery of the ancient humans in an astronaut suit on the moon, but he is over 100,000 years old. I have not heard of it. Uh, I will check it out. That sounds cool. I like that kind of story. Uh, ancient astronauts is, you know, that, that I went down this weird rabbit hole as a kid. I watched in search of, I've read the Bermuda triangle by Charles Berlitz. Uh, and I, it was just on after that, then cherry to the gods and, uh, God meeting Eric Von Daniken and getting to hang out with him a little bit was like a treat of a lifetime. Uh, and, uh, I got to find my show reel. So I used to work in Hollywood while I was owning the comic shop. I, after the great recession, I had to take on a second job. So I decided to edit professionally and I didn't edit very much. Actually, I did a lot of metadata and worked on Blu-rays for Technicolor, but I did a, a couple of show reels that I put together and, uh, Giorgio Sukulos was putting together a show reel. And at the time I had no idea what it was for. And I helped light an interview. Uh, that a uh, friend of mine, Cat McLeod, did. And he put it together and it turned out to be uh, kind of a pitch for ancient aliens. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I know Giorgio. I haven't talked to him in a while. I saw him three years ago. It's the last time I talked to him. Uh, good guy. He's a nice guy. All right. So, everybody, have a great night. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I will probably, I have to do some homework tonight because I'm going to probably do a Last of Us video. Um, and, uh, We'll see how that goes. I, I, I've never, I'm going to more, I'm going to talk about uh, more what happened to uh, my friends on the platforms. Apparently a bunch of them got struck down by Naughty Dog. So I got to do my research, but until then, everybody have a great night. Thank you everyone for being here and may the wings of Liberty never lose a feather. <laughs>